Okay, good evening. Welcome to the Town of Deerfield's board of, uh, Select Board Board of Health meeting. This is August 25th, 2021, and the time is now 6.03. Uh, this meeting is, uh, location is the main meeting room, Deerfield Municipal Offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with the Governor Baker's June 16th, 2021 Act enacting certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including an extension of the remote participation provisions of his March 20th, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of open meeting law. Uh, General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 20. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technical problems interrupt the virtual broadcast, unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans to, for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room of Deerfield Municipal Offices with remote participations uh, noted. The dial-in number is 312-626-6799 or 929-205-6099. Meeting ID is 911-604-1580. The passcode is 570012. Uh, if you go onto the Town of Deerfield website, uh, there is a link, uh, URL link for the Zoom meeting. Uh, just click on that. Uh, meeting attendants should mute phones uh, if they're on a landline at star six, unless asking questions or, or commenting. All attendees should vis should wait to speak until the participants are finished. Officially call the meeting to order. The first thing on our agenda this evening is a presentation from the United States Post Office on the treehouse stamp. Turn the floor over to you. Rob Leary, the manager of post office operations for the Can you go closer to the speaker? We'll bring the speaker closer to her. Well, okay. Okay. Thank you. I can't hear anything now. Like, did you hit mute, Trevor? Probably. Yeah, you did. Thank you. Hi. Can you, can you start, start again? Over? Start over. Thanks. And I hope you can hear me through my mask. I took advantage of the facilities of the people that we're honoring tonight, but I'm being extra careful because my husband has a health issue. So once again, good evening. My name is Robin Driscoll. I'm postmaster of Deerfield. And along with Rob Leary, the manager of post office operations for the 013 zip code area, and Steve Moreau, the Postmaster of South Deerfield, we would like to thank you for joining the United States Postal Service today as we dedicate and honor unsung heroes of our town of Deerfield. 2020 was a year like no other due to the COVID-19 outbreak, our lives changed. Schools, restaurants, stores, and businesses closed. Some people worked from home, many could not work at all. And through it all, one thing became evident. Concern for one another was at an all-time high, and essential workers became heroes, the amazing people that are contributing to getting our lives back to normal. The Postal Service understands what it means to be essential, to show up when nobody else does, to put forth an extra effort to ensure that a need is met. And we would like to take this time to acknowledge the extra effort that Treehouse Brewing Company and the South County Emergency Dispensing Group gave when it was needed. In November 2020, Treehouse Brewing Company expanded to the Deerfield area. This expansion solidified their commitment to Massachusetts and New England. They are a non-distributing brewery and as such are bringing much needed synergy to the existing local breweries, both in town and in the surrounding community. 
they will bring jobs and stability to Deerfield. Beginning in March 2021, they allowed the South County Emergency Dispensing Group to use their site to administer the COVID vaccine distribution. The warehouse portion of their operation was a light, bright, but most importantly, a warm and dry location to safely deliver the vaccine. The convenience and ease the location provided and the complete setup of facilities directly contributed to our high vaccination rate and most definitely prevented avoidable hospitalizations and even deaths. We as a community are deeply appreciative of their contribution of facilities and their generous support to make our clinic successful. The Department of Public Health after September 11, 2001 determined that Massachusetts needed the capacity to distribute medication in the case of a bioterrorism attack or a natural disaster like a pandemic. The following 10 years were practiced and drilled using various drive-through plans as well as door-to-door -door plans with teams of our volunteers based on how the U.S. Postal Service was able to reach all residents in one day. The door-to-door -door plans averaged five to seven minutes to each house. The drive-through had lanes of cars go through registration, triage, vaccine distribution, and the form collection waiting area. Each stage, staffed by volunteers who over the years trained and drilled to be ready for an emergency. The Treehouse Brewing Company location was ideal to set up the COVID-19 vaccination effort. The experienced and competent volunteers of the South County Emergency Dispensing Group were able to distribute the vaccine with output that was comparable to professional staff clinics. The emergency dispensing site is structured to follow the incident command model. There is a unified command from the four towns, made up by Caitlin Rock and Tom Fighting and Kevitz from Sunderland, Fran Fortino and Mike Archibald from Waitley, Jack Choate and Carl Nelke from Conway, and Carolyn Ness, Dave Wolf from, and Trevor McDaniel from Deerfield. The operations chief, Holly Stark, handled the COVID vaccine clinic during the pandemic. Kevin Scarborough, Deerfield DPW, handled logistics. And Zach Smith, South County Emergency Medical Director, was the safety officer. Kate was the financial officer. Lisa White, Deerfield Public Health Nurse, was the medical supervisor. And Carmelo Lanza Weil was the non medical supervisor. There were over 140 dedicated, wonderful volunteers that stepped up to help. The team effort was successful from the combined work of everyone. On August 21st, 2020, the Postal Service issued a Ferrara stamp that perfectly states what everybody is thinking when Treehouse Brewing Company and the South County Emergency Dispensing Group is mentioned. Thank you. The two simple words are highlighted in gold foil in cursive strips and in elegant floral design swirled through and around the words. Dana Tanamaki, stamp designer and lettering artist, drew the original sketches by hand and then created the final art digitally. There is a renewed awareness of the need for gratitude, and these elegant and joyful stamps add visual appeals to no charge and acts of time to, as a job well done. The Treehouse Brewing Company and the South County Emergency Dispensing Group is deserving of a thank you for a job well done. You are there when you are needed most. On September 13, 2018, the U.S. Postal Service issued the Honoring First Responders Stamp. Emergencies of various types occur in our communities every day, from fires, medical emergencies, accidents, and violent crimes. These critical situations require men and women who possess the training and knowledge to rescue the endangered, treat the injured, and restore safety and order. For many, responding to emergencies is their full-time occupation, while others are highly trained volunteers. Let us not forget the men and women that receive the calls, the dispatchers. We would like to thank you all for always being there when needed. The digital illustration on this stamp, which we will see shortly, is a symbolic scene that shows three first responders in profile, facing right, 
as they race into action. The first figure is a red firefighter carrying an axe. The second figure is a grayish white EMS worker with the EMS star of light visible on her cap, upper arm, and emergency bag. The third figure is a blue law enforcement officer shining a flashlight toward unknown danger ahead. The dark background and signs of smoke suggest a wide range of situations that demand the immediate attention of a first responder. The Postal Service recognized all first responders for their skills, dedication, and uncommon bravery. At this time, I would like to welcome Primo's Brewing Company. We have Damien and Dean here. Come up. And the South County Emergency Dispensing Site volunteers. Everybody, come on up. <laughs> to join come on me. Up, guys. And to dedicate the thank you stamp to the Tree House Brewing Company and the honored first responder to, to the South County Emergency Dispensing Group. You guys can unveil the stamp. Something happened to the phone. We can't hear any of you.
Trevor? Trevor? Can anybody hear me? Jen, I can hear you. Are you asking for the people who are in the town hall or the people on the call? <laughs> no, I know you guys can hear me. <laughs> town hall. Yeah, we can hear you. I don't know what they hit. No, I need, they. their speakers are off. Hey Jen, can you have FCAT go out there? Can you get hold of them? I've been texting. I think Casey's up and she's dialing in. Okay. Thanks. See if it's muted, Casey. It's making us use cell phone terminology. Yeah. Now okay. 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 Nobody, nobody sees. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so the next uh, thing on our agenda is the town clerk, uh, is Barbara. Uh, it's a possibility of uh, garage bond refinance. Hi. Welcome. Hi, Good Barbara. To you. Yes. Hello. Thank you for being one of our volunteers, by the way. Uh, yes. You're very welcome. It was a pleasure. Um, I wanted to meet briefly with you so that I could um, kind of run past an idea that I had. Um, a sense everyone is refinancing these days. I thought to myself, maybe our garage bond that we've had for almost 10 years would be um, eligible for doing the same. So since um, since that thought, I reached out to my fiscal advisor, and in fact, um, at the beginning of the year, we'll be eligible to what they say call that bond and refinance it. So she kind of uh, ran some numbers to see if it was um, a viable, worth it, kind of like you do with your home mortgage. You know, you save a point. How much does that cost based on how much you spend and right. etc. So um, I made a little spreadsheet, and actually, the savings. Um, now these are. Um, projected um, interest rates and that kind of thing. Um, but um, based on the numbers that are kind of circulating right now, she ran our remaining balance, uh, the old way and the new way, and we would save um, over the course of it $369,000. Um, so so, so. Um, this is based on 1.37%. So what happens is, it's, I will try and communicate this in a, in a Layman's no, term, no. which um, if you look at, um, you have three pieces of paper there. Um, the first one is a summary spreadsheet I did just so that you can kind of see what we save each fiscal year, um, how much we save in interest, how much we save in principal. Um, the next two pages, the, the second page is what uh, the new loan would look like based on our assumed numbers. And then the third page is our actual loan that we have right now. 
And so when you um, look at these loans and decide whether it's a good atmosphere or environment for refinancing, you look at the coupon rate and you look at the yield. So the difference between the coupon rate, which is kind of the interest in bonds right now, which is really high. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. The coupon rate, is um, it starts out, I think, at 5%. Yep. Uh, then when you look at the yield, that's the interest rate. And pretty much in bonds, when one goes up, the other goes down. So we are in the per perfect atmosphere because we have a lot of interest, which has driven the yield way down. And so the difference between that is what we would get in a premium. Great. So the premium, based on the numbers, again, um, we'll run them in the spring if we choose to do this. The premium is like four hundred and twenty-two thousand yep. dollars. So you use um, most of that to bring the principal down. So we would refinance. Um, you'll see at the bottom of the page there. We'll refinance instead of two thousand um, two million nine hundred and forty dollars. We would um, forty thousand dollars. We would refinance two million six hundred and five thousand yeah. dollars um so that's where the significant savings is and then just below that you can compare the two interests and we'd save like 30 something thousand in interest but the bulk of it is um the premium because of the difference between the coupon rate and the yield the premium that would um you know kind of hack down the principal and, right. and therefore um generate the savings over the the rest of the term so, wonderful. We are I thought it was a great idea. <laughs> I, I assumed you would. Um, thank you very much. I think the only little um, note to keep in mind is that when we refinance, we would then again have another um, bunch of years that we would not be able to refinance again. So, this you know, loan. This, right, this loan. right. Yeah. So well, we would not be able to call it until right. um, 2030. So, yes, but you know when when the interest rate yeah. is about 1.3, I, I, I right. that's the net interest. So they figure it all out based on the print, you know, the principal know, and the whatever, and it comes I, up. I don't yeah. think we're going to get much lower than that. Exactly. One point three. It's such a great atmosphere right now because the bonds are yeah. just, there's yeah. so much interest in the bonds yeah. that brings the coupon up and the yield down. So if we got did, a big huge difference there. If we did nothing, the um, I mean the loan is due to mature in 2033 anyway. Well, I didn't change the um, the maturity date or, so or anything. Great. Yeah, just took the exact same amount of money for the same term. Um, the best deal we're going to get, hopefully, by the by I the would think so. Year, we'll be good. And you said, what, when would that be, in January? Or? Um, it, it will probably be in the spring. Okay. Yeah, it has to be after December. Okay. So All right. um, there is the whole issuance of bonds again. I have to go through yep. bond council and, and all of that. So yeah. I'll have a couple months lead up to that. Sure. Um, but I just wanted to kind of check in with Absolutely. you before we went. Yes. Okay. Yeah, 100%. I, I keep, that, it, yeah. keep an eye on it, and whenever yeah. Yeah. we yeah. are el eligible, go for it. I don't I mean, think I, anyone suspects there'll be a major change in anything between right. now and then. So, um, yeah, hopefully those figures will hold, and um, it'd be nice to yeah. not pay $370,000. Absolutely. There's <laughs> a lot of other projects to put it towards. Yeah, yeah. Good. Okay. I just wanted to kind of summarize that and go over it, and if anyone has any questions, um, I think the front spreadsheet is the easiest yeah. way I could put it together. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You so much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Have a great Appreciate day. it. Thanks, Thanks for coming. Okay. All great. Right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> next thing is we have a scheduled hearing. Um, do you want to read the? Well, go ahead. No. No. You want me to read it? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so uh, let's see, uh, public hearing notice. A public hearing will be held by the Deerfield Board of Health at the Municipal Offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass., on August 25th, 2021 at 6.15 p.m. to consider adopting body art regulations. Meetings are being held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation for purposes of in-person Attendance, the Town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room of the, of the Deerfield Municipal Offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass., 01373. Remote per, uh, participation noted below. The dial-in number is 312-626-6799. The toll-free number is 833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580. 
The passcode, should you need it, is 570012. You can also go to our uh, town website, Deerfield um, Mass website, and go to the bottom right where the calendar is. You'll see all of our meetings. The, this meeting is posted there, and there you'll be able to click on a Zoom link if you'd like to join us by Zoom. Um, the proposed regulations may include but are not limited to the purpose uh, limited to the purpose of the regulations, definitions of terms, exemptions, restrictions, operational requirements, standards of practice, injury and complaint, applications for establishment and particular permits, grounds for suspension, denial, revocation, refusal for renewal and suspension of permits, hearing procedures and unauthorized practice. The regulations are available for inspections in the foyer of the municipal offices during business hours or may be viewed on the town website at um, www.deerfieldma.us uh, slash board of health or board uh, dash health. So our meeting is open. Mm -hmm. so, um, do I hear any comments? I guess I'd just like to make the comment that um, this is basically cut and paste from Northampton who has successfully had this um, in force for almost eight years. And um, in our discussions with Meredith O'Leary, who is the health director in Northampton, um, we made a few tweaks from the, and we used the Boston language from the Boston um, um, body art uh, regulations to um, cut and paste. So this, I think this is a really good, um, regulation that is enforceable and um, provides, um, you know, hy hygienic public safety for any um, clients and, um, and is, and is user friendly for the actual t tattoo artist. So, I, I mean, I feel like it's a good combination. The tattoo artists were the ones that designed the um, regulations, you know, as part of the panel with public health people in Northampton, so um, I, I feel like it's a very good, complete regulation. So um, we have literally just approved this in May 19th, yeah. and, and then, so I wasn't aware that we were doing this again, um, and I, from what I understand, we've, um, our work, our um, Board of Health agent had went through and made some changes to, to what we had just approved in on the 19th. He found some updated things and wanted to kind of update that. Yes. So those are the tweaks from the Boston. Okay, so that so originally it was from Boston. Now this is from Northampton. No, this was originally the the template was from Northampton. We cut and paste um, just the eyebrowing, you know the the eyebrow one. Uh, the the yeah. Yeah. Um, boss. Then what happened is Alex has um, up, went through and updated again, and he, he used the updated Boston regulations. It, it's mostly definitions. Is there would would it be beneficial to have Alex here to tell us what he changed? Or I mean, it, I it was it was minor stuff, and he also developed a. Um, um, application, which I do not actually have a cover, um, a copy of. Could we, um, could we just continue this the next meeting and then just, sure. just if you want to see the application and I, I hadn't had a chance to read it yet. I okay. mean, I read the other one, but I, I didn't realize it was coming up again. So, um, yeah, no, that's but fine. I, I think, yeah, I'm so thrilled that he, he went through and found areas to, to improve it. And, um, yeah, and well, the reason why we use Boston is because Boston's, you know, um, seemingly really a cutting edge, you know, regulation yeah, as well. For sure. And, and Northampton's was a really good local template to begin with. Yeah. So that's why so we. So a combination of the two worked out. Right. Um, okay. <clears throat> it's fine with me. I don't. Uh -huh. I don't. I mean. I don't. We, we don't have any Boston, pending. We don't have any pending applications, do we, Kate? Not that yeah. I've seen. Okay. 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 Then I feel comfortable just waiting for another couple. We can read it and then come back to the next meeting yeah. and just approve it. Yeah. Or or continue the hearing, I guess, next until next. Yeah. Well, I would continue yeah. the hearing. Do we want to take public comment on the hearing? No. No, I think you continue the. If you want to continue the hearing, 
then you continue it with more information. Okay. Ah. Continue to um, September 8th. September 8th is our next meeting. Well, you have yeah. one tomorrow, so, but I don't want you to say your next meeting if it's. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's next perfect. regular meeting. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Jennifer. So, do I hear a motion to continue? Until? I would make that motion to continue to September 8th. And I, I will second that. Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, that's fine, Trevor. Any further discussion? Yeah. No. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Neff. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Great. Okay. Um, Casey? Yeah. Uh, would it be a problem if we uh, jump to the manager for Treehouse? Oh, go ahead. Seeing they're a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. If you don't mind. <laughs> Welcome sure. back. Thank you for coming tonight, by the way, everybody. Oh, yeah. Please. Um, we sincerely thank you for the use of your building. That was very good. Mm -hmm. uh, currently in front of us, we have an application of change of uh, manager at uh, the Treehouse Brewing here in uh, South Deerfield. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing, no, but uh, basically... Uh, uh, we're changing out um, Kim for uh, Damien. Is that correct? Boudreaux. Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, it, it, uh, for the record, uh, Mark Borenstein. Is on. Uh, no, leave that down where it was. Okay. Because right. it's. It does pick it up. It, okay. It's a jury rigged system until their new system gets here. Understood. So, uh, for the record, Mark Borenstein, attorney for Triage Brewing Company, Inc. Um, before you is an application to uh, essentially change the manager of record from Kim Galinsky to Damien Goodrow and also to update the proposed uh, officers for the company. Um, Kim is no longer with the company. Um, she's moved on to a, a new uh, position, okay. a separate company. So we're seeking to update that documentation before the ABCC approves the uh, pouring permit for the Pharma Series uh, pouring permit. Um, I don't have any questions. Do you guys? I don't. Um, you know, um, you know, it's just a matter of formality, and you know, uh, we've worked with Damien quite a bit, so we know Damien. Um, right. And you know, it's. Um, so I would make a motion to approve the management change from Kim to uh, Damien Goodrow. I'll I'll second that motion. And then again, we typically always just ask about tips, training, and that kind of thing, right? At every time yes. we, we have this, and I assume that all you guys can do all that as we talk with her. So, no, I'm, I'm comfortable okay. with the change. Okay. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn Neff. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Guys. Hey. Thank, Thank you. you. So that means you're going to get Dean out on the track with you now that you're the manager over there? Oh, okay. <laughs> just... <laughs> Come on, where's your sense of adventure? <laughs> <laughs> just, just to be clear, that the vote also included to be change the officers as well, correct? That's yes. correct. Yes. No, that's yes. correct. So make sure. Okay. Thank you. Is there anything else I'm using for this evening? Or are we no. Good? Nope. We're good. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good night. So this has to be for the ABCC. Yes, actually, I think you've got something to sign. What they did is they pulled their application back that we had already approved um, earlier to contact. Yeah, they contact. And 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 are then they're going to resubmit. So, all right, they didn't actually get their license because they wanted to yep. get it changed before it was issued. All right, so what we're going to do, um, you guys can sign these, but. As soon as we get the application from the ABCC, I will ask you to come in and sign. Yeah. Because we have to create a new form 43, but we need some, we need that information from them. Okay. Yeah. And we checked the last three days in the mail, and we haven't received it. Okay. okay. Yeah. No, that's fine. So if it's all right with you, I'll give you a call and have you come in and mm -hmm. sign at your convenience. Sure.
Do you need a motion for that, Casey, or just um, proceed to one if you want one? A motion for sign the um, sign at your convenience the, um, the, 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 the form the forms to present back to the ABCC. We can't send it until we get the application back. Right, right. Somebody else make that. Oh, uh, we can't use a stamp, so you got to have a sign. Yeah, yeah you got to have. That's be. why I wanted. All right, so you just need to wet signature. Yeah, so you just need to contact us. So we can come in and sign. Okay. But I, I, I would think we, you know, at our convenience is fine. Ooh, sorry, Dave. I jabbed you. Uh, so next thing on our agenda is select board reports and announcements. Um, I just want to say it was very thoughtful that um, Robin and the postal office, postal office, um, Honored us for our COVID. No yeah. doubt. I just thought it was very nice. And honored yeah. all the volunteers. Yeah, all the volunteers. All the volunteers. There's a lot of hours to have all. Actually, and, and three houses. And all of you guys worked so hard. I know. So it was really nice. When will the stamps be available? No, they're available now. They are. Yeah. Okay. So either post office. Yeah, either post office. You just ask for the hero ones or the thank you ones. Oh, yep. I'm so excited. I'm going to buy stamps. I know. That's just, <laughs> Those are so cool. Amazing. That. <laughs> the stamps. Yeah. They're so cool. Hang up. Yep. <laughs> um, Anything else on the select board? <clears throat> uh, yeah. uh, well, I just, I just update. I met with... Um, Casey and I met with um, Jeff, Squire. Jeff Squire from Berkshire Design Friday, I think, right? Yes. Yeah, Friday. And um, so he presented an initial kind of map out plan, and I can show you that. I've got those you can see. I think I got them up on the shelf up there um, for ideas on how to, uh, how to make our town look a little bit more... Um, concise and lay out a blueprint for what we want the town to look like and um, so he's he's working on a scope of services and a contract to kind of start that process I also met with um, as I mentioned at maybe last meeting um, Woodard and Curran another engineer firm to kind of do the same thing have some ideas on that so uh, we received a proposal and a scope today in the email and I sent it to Casey and she'll send it out but um, at some point we should gather up and decide you know do we, do we want to do an RFP for this do we you know uh, or do we want to just pick one engineer firm we just kind of have have a discussion between us and just see what we want to do to move forward to kind of start with that visioning plan you know we had a great meeting on Monday with um, the town common ad hoc town common committee and Levy Dwight came and um, from the Senior Housing Committee, and, and we had a really nice meeting about what their visions are, what they would like to do, um, their ideas and plans, and how we could kind of work together. And maybe, um, I, know, I think we talked last time about moving this committee into more of a visioning of downtown or visioning of Deerfield committee, uh, moving it away from the comm, you know, adding more to the charge from just the common to kind of lay out a master plan. And, and present to the town and the select board. So um, I just want to mention I had those meetings and I'd love to talk more about that at another time. We'll get it on the agenda and look at those plans and see what those scopes are and the budgets are to do that. Okay. Well, there is one thing I forgot to say. We had Andre come through and we were so worried about that. And for a while, honestly, it looked like Irene it too. It really uh, did. And it was very scary. Um, but I want to thank the police chief, John Pachorek, yes. Jen Bartek, Adam Sokolowski. They were in there all weekend, mm -hmm. um, you know, monitoring the rivers with me and um, keeping an eye on things. And Kevin Scarborough wow. and Chris Miller, the highway department, everybody uh, went out and every single, every single culvert was cleaned and, and you know, a uh, picture taken so that we could document any losses or any problems afterwards. And um, 
and then nothing happened. Yeah, we've had, which is thrilling. <laughs> we were, yeah, very we were so excited. It, you know, I was a little worried Monday night. The gauges in, in Charlemont were going up. Yeah. You know, so I was watching them all night, and it was another whole night of no sleep. But um, all of a sudden, it was the weirdest thing. It, you know, it was creeping yeah, up over 7,000 CFS, which, you know, you get, its emergency amount is like a 9,000. You get over 9,000, yeah. it's flooding down here. And I was like, oh, my gosh, it's going up you know, because we had all that rain as it swept back. And then all oh, of a sudden, it dropped right. down to 5,600. And yeah, we like, got up to like 12,000 at this gauge that I follow, 12,500. And then and then it just started dropping like a rock, and it yeah. was great. It was so thrilling. Well, Charlama is the one that we yeah, that's worry the one. Yeah. And, 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 I, and Dennis Anir, the fire chief in Charlemont, you know, I he was wonderful. He did two personal visits to Harriman Dam for me, yeah. you know, to eyeball how much capacity we really have. Uh, you know, it's about a foot an inch of rain. Mm -hmm. So if you get an inch of rain, if you have four or five feet capacity, ponding capacity at Harriman, that means you can get like four or five inches and it's not going to be a problem. Yeah. The thing is, um, the rest of the dams below Harriman, are, are just generating dams. And the reason why Harriman is so important is because that can actually, you know, has the capacity to store the water, but none of the other dams do. So if you start having spilling or, you know, the glory hole starts going um, at Harriman, it just cascades down. So it's, yeah. it's very, it's complicated. There's all kinds of issues with, you know, South River, North River, Chickley, all those things. But um, everybody just really pulled together. We had an emergency meeting on Friday afternoon at 3 o'clock. Everyone shared their plans to get ready, and, and then everyone monitored everything through the weekends at the fire departments. Uh, Kevin had and Chris pre-staged barricades and cones and all kinds of stuff. The fire departments had, you know, our, our town gets seg segregated and separated when we have um, flooding. So, you know, they were, it was plans for pre-positioning, you know, for emergency vehicles and all kinds of stuff, and, and we didn't have to. But I want to thank Very everyone correct. for being ready. It, yes. it takes a lot of effort, and um, people were paying attention all weekend, and that was really, very nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I'm so thankful we didn't have any activity. So, but. And, you know, just as a side note, from the last flooding we had in Old Deerfield, the work that was done up there in cleaning out that area, um, we had normal water flow down through there without any backups, yeah. um, and it showed that we did really the right did thing. the right thing there. Yeah. Yep. And it just um, Fred, it, Fred is the one that caused all the trouble. There was started with Elsa and all the rain we had in July, but but then Fred really yeah. broke it, yep. and uh, it was amazing. Yeah. So it yeah. worked. So it really good. They did a real good job and. And again, thank you to Kevin and John Pachorek because yeah. they're pushing Mass DOT to do work too. Yep. Okay. So. Good. Okay. Okay. Um, Board of Health reports? Well, um, I just want to say I, I attended a vaccine meeting this morning, and um, uh, the third shot's coming, but probably not till next month. And the latest information is on the kids is still sometime in the fall. Um, but there are huge staffing shortages in our healthcare system, and and of course nobody's too excited about doing, you know, clinics again. So I think we're going to rely on our EDS to yeah. do the flu vaccine, which we have scheduled for the seniors on September 30th, and then October 3rd is for all ages. But September 30th, we're hoping to have the third shot for Moderna. We we understand. Sometime in mid-September, around the 20th, they're supposed to approve the third shot for Moderna and um, uh, for everybody, not just the immune impaired. And so um, we'll hopefully have that. I have a question on that. The, um, so I understand that you, um, you want to go eight months, isn't it, right, from your last? So we had, we had our early seniors had gotten a shot early in, in the winter. Mm -hmm. So they'll be ready now or soon. Um, but then a lot of people who had got it in April or June wouldn't be getting it till right. and we'll, and we'll, September or January. And we'll, we'll, we're going to run another clinic for third shot based yeah. on our treehouse right. one. Models. That's the idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so 
Those will be later in the winter. But that's later in the winter. We don't even have our flu vaccine yet, so I, that's why I say it's tentative because the flu vaccine is running a little late getting here. But I, I'm sure it doesn't seem like it's going to be a problem getting it for September 30th. But, you know, this is like normal. We always yep. are sweating minute. whether we get it, getting our vaccine or not. Yep. Um, so, but one of the information that is what came up in a EPH call yesterday and was reiterated again this morning at meeting is that statewide, and this is kind of good news, is the wastewater treatment facilities that are monitored, in other words, they, they check to see what the COVID leavings are in the wastewater. Um, it looks like potentially we're at the peak already for Delta statewide, yep. and that another five or six weeks to climb down, it might be fairly normal. That's not to say that there's not another variant like the mm -hmm. Lambda or Who some other thing else? is going to come in the wintertime. But it looks like because of our vaccination rate, we are doing extremely well, yes. and it might have already peaked here. I mean, this is just speculation based on wastewater testing, but um, it appears to be that's what's happening. Yes. So that's very exciting. It's good news. And... Um, you know, the kids have got to get back to school. We are having cases, and it is so distressing to see cases with kids. Um, it's very distressing to me. And um, so do everything you can. If you're not vaccinated, please get the vaccine. It does work. It keeps you from getting hospitalized for the most part, and it certainly it will keep you from hopefully passing, ICU. So, you know, an ICU kind of problem. There are, there are uh, so there's like 467 cases of you know, people in mass with COVID in hospitals, there was about 160 that were already vaccinated. Um, so it really, but, but that, you don't really understand if that's a, a pre-existing condition and they happen to have COVID or is that why they're in the hospital? So I know that when I, my meeting on Monday was the round table at FERCOG, uh, I went to that meeting and they were going to dig into that number a little bit more because it kind of took everybody they brought off it, They brought it up yesterday it up? at okay. the DPH call. and um, more data to figure out. They that. have to figure out the data. Right. The re but if you look, you know, like Katie Brown, who is our mm -hmm. state epidemiologist, so if you look individually at each case, the ones that are hospitalized that have been vaccinated usually have pretty severe underlying conditions. It would have brought and them in they, anyway. they would have gone in anyway without the vaccine, but they probably would have already been dead. Right. It and she, you them. know, she, she says just from looking at the cases, she can't, she, she knows it's a high percentage, but she has, you have to understand that um, so much is circulating in the state that, you know, all right. these people that have it are not, are not even being hospitalized. Because of the vaccine. Correct. So Correct. It, the vaccine, it, the is vaccine has really worked. It she does she work. says that the, the effectiveness of this vaccine is in the 90 percentile or higher. Mm -hmm. There's no question. And, and so, it drops. That's why booster shots. It drops to around 60, which is still good for a vaccine. But um, and and the reason why, and again, the reason why it's not that the vaccine stops working, but what happens is based on. The, the, the work that's, you know, the studies that have been done in Israel and Europe, they are like a month to six weeks to eight weeks ahead of us in the dealing with the Delta variant, mm -hmm. dealing with illness in general. So it seems to be around that time frame. So it's, if you base it on their studies, it's not that it becomes less effective per se, but what happens is, is, is you get... When you were initially given the shot, it was very important to get antibodies and the ability to fight it sooner. Mm -hmm. So in reality, we probably should have had one shot and then like three months later or four months later had the second shot. But because we needed to have the immunity right away, they were doing three weeks yeah. for mm -hmm. Pfizer and a month for Moderna. So what they're saying is that they think this third shot for people that have less robust immune system. Somebody younger like you, Trevor, right. probably is going to be fine and, and could go even a year, year and a half, whatever. Yeah. Somebody like me or Dave who are older or somebody in their 80s. More mature. 
Yeah, more mature. No, I can't use that. Our, our My family mature. would never say I was mature. <laughs> All right. In their 80s, you know, our, our, our immune systems aren't as robust. So we might have a decline that's, that's a little bit faster. And they're saying that the eight months is pretty fast. But the reason why we, have, we as a country are so big and um, we have to get going on this third shot yeah. it should be ahead of what the, you know, your declining immunity because it's just, yeah. there's just so many they, of us. This is not, we're not like Israel. We're not like right. England, which is just not much bigger than, you know, New England, New England or right. Massachusetts. Yeah. So, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the thing is to be ahead, we're doing this a little bit earlier, but it should last for a while. This is not going to be like a yearly thing. They don't think. And people are sometimes concerned that the, you know, I, I'm concerned I don't want to get the, the shot. Um, the, the vaccine disappears from your body. It's not like it stays with you for eight months. Your no, body builds up the immunity to it, and it's yeah. your body that's blocking it up. You don't hang on to the vaccine forever and, you know, get illness from a vaccine. It's just, it's really... Um, really stress people enough, get the vaccine so we can be done with this already, please? Yeah. Yep. The, uh, I'm a strong advocate. Hi. Well, public comment. <laughs> I just want to make a comment before we go to that. The, uh, I'm a strong advocate that any individual, whether it be support staff or teachers or whatever, uh, the dealing with our children, uh, should be required to have the vaccine, whether it be childcare, schools, what, um, you know, it's, there's enough data out there. Pfizer has administered over a billion shots now. Um, there's a lot of data there. Um, and it's proactive from my understanding. There is one private school in town that's already mandated for all their employees. Um, but the, um, I think it's, it would be prudent, prudent of us to look at and saying, hey, if you're going to deal with our children, you have to be vaccinated. If you don't want to be vaccinated, you shouldn't be dealing with our children. And from what I understand, that's a school committee vote, correct? I believe it is. I think I it, believe is. it is. I yes. believe it is when it relates to the school. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And but, employees. you know, that's my opinion on it, and it's just, you know. Yeah. Uh, having well, a, agree. Having a year-and-a-half-old grandson and a granddaughter on her way, uh, I'm just a mm -hmm. strong advocate that, you know, I don't want them to get sick. I mean, I try to be so careful, too. I mean, our kids, Madeline's only eight. Cece fortunately turned 12 yep. this summer, and she was able to get vaccinated. But, you know, I, we still have Madeline that are yeah. not yep. vaccinated. So, our family yep. there, so. so you really, it makes you nervous. Yep. Um, okay. Jennifer, you have a public comment? Um, yes, Jeff, Jeff? Hoffman. Oh, uh, you're muted, Jeff. Eric, go ahead. I there unmuted you. you. Thank you. Uh, yes, I just had a quick question, and uh, it's in regard to the uh, COVID vaccination and the flu vaccination. Is there a time period uh, where people need to wait be between getting the flu shot and no. the COVID shot no. or vice versa? No. Uh, my understanding no. was that there isn't. So you could you no. can get them in a week or two of each other and no problems. No, same, same, same day. day, same day. Same you yep. put you put the flu shot in one arm and the COVID shot in another arm. Do both. That's the only recommendation is use different arms. Um, I asked that at a DPH meeting last week with Katie Brown, and then That's Fran true. Fortino asked that yesterday. Again, and we got from um, uh, Jenna Ferguson the answer and the link, w which gave us, this, you know, the science part. So Fran forwarded it to me, uh, the link uh, that actually went through the science of it, that you can have both the flu shot and your third dose on the same. Because I wanted to make sure before I started, you know, saying to seniors, uh, September 30th, come get your flu shot and come get your third shot. Um, I wanted to be able to do it. Yeah. We um, are going to do a color training. Uh, the prep mod, the state has phased out of prep mod, and we are going to do um, a color training in mid-September 
to train our EDS to be able to do um, the scheduling, but it will be a private link for, I, that was absolutely clear, we're not competing against anyone else, it's our private link for our community uh, drive through on September 30th and October 3rd. So you, we, you will be able to sign up. Uh, anyone that needs help with signing up, uh, hopefully the triad, Sharon Pachorek, we've um, reached out to Sharon Pachorek already. So triad will be able to help and, and hopefully Rissa and uh, Jen Bartek and uh, you know Jen um, Glinsky um, will all be able to help us and make sure that it happens just yeah. like we did. Sue Corey, too, Sue Corey had out. already been yeah. willing to um, work with the senior center so, uh, and take calls. So I, I, I think it's going to be really straightforward, no issues, hopefully. Okay, uh, but if Excellent. you're receiving some other type of vaccine other than the flu vaccine and the COVID uh, combination, uh, you should consult with your medical Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. Doctor, because like myself, I had a shingle shot and I had to wait for X number of uh, days before I could have the COVID shot. Yeah. So there are vaccines that can't be given within a certain time frame. Also, we will only do the Moderna. So we offered the Moderna through the Treehouse Clinic. N none of us feel comfortable handling. They've, they've downgraded the way they handle um, uh, Pfizer, but Pfizer's still really fussy for mm -hmm. volunteer group to handle. Yeah, so so we, we will invite, um, even though they're having staffing issues, the, we will invite Bay State um, hospital system to come in and help us um, do the elementary schools for the under 12 as soon as they become eligible, um, and they will be the Pfizer uh, vaccine, but they handle the Pfizer vaccine for us. We, right. as the EDS, don't actually handle it. Whereas the Moderna, you know, we're perfectly capable of handling Moderna. Mm -hmm. And they don't, and I'm not saying that Johnson, we wouldn't have the Johnson Johnson available either, but the Johnson Johnson is uh, about seven or eight weeks behind Moderna and Pfizer as far as having it to distribute. So, um, that seven or eight weeks when it hit, um, you know, public usage means that it will be at least a month to six weeks, um, you know, sometime, you know, end of October, beginning of November-ish, maybe before Thanksgiving, before Johnson & Johnson, we have some kind yeah. of idea of a second shot is needed for Johnson & Johnson. Perfect. Thank you. Good info. Thank you very much for that information. Appreciate it. That's yeah. very helpful. Okay. Anything else on the Board of Health? No. Sorry. That no, was that's long winded. No. Uh, minutes? No. We actually don't have any. We've okay. been working on great yep. stuff. Um, next discussion item uh, adoption hey. of the public comment participation policy. Casey? Uh, you have a, uh, yes. Don't we have some minutes in the packet or did you take it out? I don't see minutes in the I don't see the, I don't see any. Yeah. I didn't I didn't see any, honey. Yeah. Nope. I didn't have any um and I just have the Yeah, I didn't see any in there. All right. Whoops. I would love to have next week. people more minutes. Next week. <laughs> yeah. Or tomorrow, we have minutes tomorrow. for you to review. We'll try to get and everything. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't remember taking anything out, so, but I don't see them. All right. So we'll circle back around tomorrow, Jennifer. Thank you. So I did mention it to her. Yep. So we had hoped to have a policy finalized for public comment participate slash participation at meetings. However, it's under review as council is conferring with representatives from the ACLU. Okay. So that's all Next I have. Meeting then? Possibly. possibly. Um, okay. Well, let us know when you have it. We will well, can review it. Yeah, we had hoped to have it by today, but unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Okay. Okay. Um, so, what we reviewed when the draft that we reviewed already, what are they doing with it? Council is working with the ACLU on the draft. Oh, I thought that was a. Nope. That wasn't the settled one? No. no. Oh. 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 
Okay. That was my misunderstanding. Okay. Uh, next thing on the agenda is a road race request. Jeremy Bucci. This is different than the other road race we had, right? Yes. Okay. I thought, I knew we just did one, right? Yes. And that's great. So the, he's representing the Franklin County Bar Association oh. Community Scholarship Fund. Okay. And they want to do a road race. Great. We passed out the information to our public safety personnel. And there's some information they would like to know, um, mostly around how many race participants there'll be. Um, but they give you, if you turn over that document, that letter, you'll see that they show you the race route. Yep. Um, so and um, Millville, oh, it's Mill Village Road to Old Main Street or vice versa. One yep. of the two. Okay. Well, that's pretty, you know, not a lot of traffic, which is good. Right. So that's great. So I'm just looking to see if there's anything I missed. Yeah, usually we have these folks check in. Um, I think comment the comment that I saw from Zach was he wanted to know um, how many participants there would be. I believe Jeremy's already talked to Chief Turek about it. Chief, yeah. so and the chief also sent an email saying um, that he was he had no problem with it. Okay, and that's what I thought. I was trying to find email. Yeah, I'm I'm fine with it if he's if he's looked at it and he understands yep. the safety, I'm, yep. I'm good to go. So the proposed date and time of the road race is 9 a.m. on Saturday, September 25th. Okay. Uh, I'm okay with that. Yeah, me yeah. too. And, and I, the I think is the week before is craft fair. Isn't that thing. correct, Casey? I don't know. I, I don't, don't know. I haven't heard anything. Yeah. yeah, I was just going to ask. That no, question. we approved the application for the craft fair already. What? For the craft really? Yeah. A long time ago, but I can't long remember the date. Ago. Yeah, I can't remember the uh, date either. Maybe it was, I wasn't on <laughs> in a meeting. I don't remember seeing it this year. Maybe it was a meeting I, I missed. Oh. I missed one. Did you? Because I had shingles. Yeah. Oh, maybe it was when you had shingles. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I don't know. But we already but approved all the paperwork. Now, so yeah. I can't so. remember uh, anything. Tim, uh, Tim called me and wanted to know about, you know, what did I think about having the craft fair? And I said, well, it's outside. At this yeah. point, there's no data saying why would you not have it. Right. So, um, but I, I'm pretty sure they, that's my only hesitation on the 25th. If the craft fair, if that's craft fair weekend. Right, you, you can't, can't run up the main sheet with, no. with that. So, um, that would be interesting. Yeah. But just yeah. verify, uh, Jennifer, yeah. Jennifer, can 18, you? Um, 1819. Oh, okay. Thank you. I'll let right. you know. Can I make a motion to approve this? Oh, Rachel. Is that Rachel? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. all right. She knows. Perfect. All right. Um, so I'll second your motion to approve this. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Hi, Carolyn Neff. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Motion carried 300. Okay, next thing on our agenda is a grant administration technical assistance consulting. Okay. So, um, I had sent y'all an email out a little earlier this week. We have the MVP implementation project scope of work for the consultant, uh, Chris Curtis. And I, when I was reviewing past grants, I noticed that any change needs to be approved by Chris Curtis and a majority of the select board as well as myself. So I had made a change to the scope of work to assist staff to finalize these grants because these are very complex grants and they're taking up more time than we've yeah. even reported. Yeah. So there were two changes and I highlighted them for you. Um, so assistance with staff for grant administration and final reporting to EEOA, EE, EOEEA, sorry, that acronym doesn't stick in my head. And there was no termination clause in the contract. So I added that based on some language that we have from council. But my, my fundamental, it, I want the board to approve it. But moving forward, I think we should be using town contracts so that we yeah. capture all of 
the terminology that council rec routinely recommends we use. And this, this is a fairly simple contract, but it, in terms, in terms of the amount of, um, the amount of work related to the items in the contract, but the work itself, well, actual work that's being done by the vendor and by the staff, I thought we needed to capture some of the disconnects that we've experienced in the last um, I, year. I agree, and also just the amount of money it is costing for these grants is it, it, a fortune. I mean, I just... Trevor, what happened was a perfect storm. We had EBI, who was supposed to be good. The guy got sick and died. And they didn't make any copies. No, I'm no. I'm talking about one contract. Is We've spent almost $120,000 with one vendor in two years. That's a lot of money. It's the same amount that we would pay per hour to FERCOG. Actually, it would be a little bit more expensive to FERCOG per hour. I just think for the amount of work and uh, the reason we, the, we, we went, the reason we went with Chris was because he was a cheaper version of what the FERCOG was going to cost. But our staff are doing an immense amount of work on top of paying that amount of money. I understand that, and but I'm, if I'm you sit down, yes, but if you sit down and you go through the contracts. The contracts, the reason why there was problems is because we had an awful contractor who really did not perform for Kelleher Drive. We EBI, the person died. I mean, and we had setbacks with weather, and we had setbacks with finding un, unknown, you know, utilities underground that were just abandoned, I guess. Who knows? Um, those are the kind of things that were a perfect storm. When I sat down with Kat, um, Casey and Jen and we, and we went over all this stuff, yes, there could have been more help. There's no question. But I'm, I think Casey and Jen have come up with Brenda, have come up with a system that will work going forward. And the next, and the, the, um, next um, MVP program is no construction. It's just curriculum in the high school. But what I'm saying is that it's costing a fortune for that, not no construction. The, I'm just not seeing the value is all, is what I'm saying. Okay, well. You know, for, for that kind of money, I, I'm just like, what is the town really getting for spending that amount of money? And, well, and that's I mean, my hang up. I know, and, but. You know, in my opinion, you know, for the money that we are spending, we'd be better off advertising for a planner for the town of Deerfield, a full-time employee. I agree. Uh, or a part-time employee, depending on, you know, uh, somebody that is planning, can work with the planning board, the ZBA, uh, as a direct consultant, somebody that can help us write grants that we need, and with the infrastructure that's hopefully going to be happening over the next five to ten years, this is an individual that can be right on top of it, and this individual is a town employee and responsible to the town, and not a contractor that isn't responsible to themselves. Um, actually, I, I agree 100% because if even just if they handled MVP um, contracts, that amount of money that we're paying of the MVP funding would fund their position completely. Yeah. So, so may I ask a question? Sure. Just because you've got a little bit of a I'm wondering if we're thinking about this from a discipline perspective, so the planning piece. It okay. does intersect a little bit with the climate resiliency goals that y'all have set, um, but a true planner may not have the, the background for the grant administration, so you might be looking at two different positions, maybe part-time. Part positions would... So that's but, my question. Are we? But they're going, in my opinion, they should be an actual employee for the town of Deerfield. Okay. I will then make my HR statement, which is, um, we have to go to the personnel board. No, 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 no. That's no. <laughs> yes, that's already, yes yeah. but no. Yes. Um, just as a an aside, I usually will tell select boards when I when this comes up. It is often more expensive long term to hire a new employee, but an employee is responsible to the people that are the hiring authority and the staff managers, so the department heads. 
So it's just I always try to get that caveat out there because yeah. you've got workers comp, you've got other things yeah. that the town well, will then the be planning board the for. planning board, what we paid out to the fur hog would have paid for a planner. You know, when we had um the help from the fur car before. We weren't paying Pat that much. Pat at the end was we were paying we were paying twenty thousand dollars. Oh, okay. Twenty thousand dollars would have paid a part time yeah. person. Just a minute, Jennifer. We'll get to you. The the budget um you know, the total project of this grant is sixty six thousand and yet half of we're then we're paying another thirty five thousand dollars to implement it. I, I, that's my concern. I'm not seeing the value. So it does help. I will say if you look at your basic scope of work on page one, um, these are all climate resiliency projects that have been discussed over a period of time. Mm -hmm. um, I know that. And, yeah. and to some extent, because of the way the grant was written, some of the connectivity is necessary for these projects. However, the reason I added the vendor assistance piece is because tracking is the most complicated right. piece of tracking and reporting. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, it's up to the board whether you want to sign it or not. <clears throat> but I will say that without some changes and notations of those changes and those expectations in this contract, I thought we needed to be prudent yep. and do that. And you know, here again, I realize the cost, and the other cost is we're going to have to redesign this building a little bit to make another office. Uh, but that's, from my understanding, those are things that we can use ARPA funds for. Yep. Uh, we can gut that area over there where the boiler and everything is right now that we're not using. I asked. I actually had somebody come in and look at the HVAC system because that boiler we're not really using is taking up a lot of space. And if we upgraded the HVAC system for, you know, everyone. Yeah, everybody, yeah. In, in a similar manner as you would upgrade the HVAC, system, HVAC system, systems in other areas, it would give us a little bit of leeway in, in how we have space to utilize, you know, to, for people to work. Yeah. And, you know, in the interim, you know, we have that conference room that could be used. Oh, yeah. Um, I know we can approach the chief if we need use his conference room for some meetings. Um, so I'll approach did the chief. Me, did you see me hide my head? No. Okay. Um, but I mean, there's it's very there's easy to work logistics that, that are involved with this. But I think in the long run, this is what the town needs, because let's face it: in the last year and a half, we've gone through a lot of things because of. The lack of good planning mm -hmm. is that the best way to put it no i think there's a correlation amongst all the zoning and how the zoning and i'm not just talking about together. mvp i'm talking about right everything that's right. happened in the town right that's really divided the town on a lot of issues and it part of that is because we didn't have the proper people in, in like a planner that could work with them a holistic approach is yes. that where you're going yes um, so that is my opinion. Well, I I, th I agree. I mean, we have um, Rachel and Anna Lee on. Yeah. But my my opinion from a planning board point of view is you, when you are doing so much planning board work, having a support for the planning board so that you're not spending hours on a numbering system and um, hours on, you know, just checking out if you're doing the correct you know, legal. Yep. And the, you know, there's other little money. changes we can make. Uh, you know, we have a, a building commissioner that probably should be more active with the planning board and with the ZBA. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, so there's a number of things that I think, you know, we've learned a lot in the last year and a half. Mm -hmm. And so let's look at it and grab the tiger by the tail and let's do, do it the right way. It, and in the long run, I think it's going to be very cost effective for the town of Deerfield. I think if we can get a few grants, that the person would be paid for. Yes. You know, and like I said, with the infrastructure bill coming through, there's going to be, because it's federal, there's going to be a, a fair amount of paperwork. And we don't have the staff for that either. 
And so that's, that's really a piece that everyone needs to understand is when you get a grant, the administrative behind the scenes work is very complex yeah. and cumbersome and it impacts our ability to do other daily work. Sure. And it isn't just me saying this, but it impacts other staff members. And yeah. so I'm they not also trying to, have I'm not trying to bug you, but did we actually get um, a number from FEMA yet as to what they're going to pay? It's in process. We had that conversation with them last week. We were on a Zoom meeting. From, we got, we got 40,000, um, our second project request we got through. If you give me a minute, I'll find it in my email, but project one has not been approved. Um, so project two, I think, I signed off on project two, but I have to find it. Hold on. What I want to know is if they do, if they approve project two and they eventually approve, project one which is in pro progress how much money is left in the CARES Act we don't know because we haven't finalized our third project we're working on it right now actually that's being completed the next couple days okay I just I want us to be very careful that we spend the CARES money before we move into the new ARPA money. Oh, I know well because the ARPA money goes on from this fiscal year to the next fiscal year, whereas the CARES Act money is gone in December. Yes, I know, and so. we're watching it closely, but this has been, Project One has been hung up in FEMA for months, and no, we no. finally had a conversation to try to dis distill what was the issue, and we're waiting for FEMA to respond to FEMA. Okay, I just want us to be aware that we need to go through the CARES Act money by December 31st. Yes. Okay. Uh, Jennifer, you had a comment? Yes. Um, I just wanted to say, you could, you know, when you hire somebody that does a, a planner, they, you can also make it a requirement that they have the grant writing and administration experience. And I've been trying my best to help the planning board and <laughs> Um, and with the grants, uh, and it's, it's challenging. It takes up a, a huge, um, immense amount of time. And I know that the money that we spend on our attorneys could be well spent on a planner that it's not going back and yep. forth. The attorneys is somebody that actually knows how to, um, read bylaws and write bylaws and, um, can help directly with the planning board. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah. That's all. Okay. So, um, I, I just, you know, I spent, you know, most of yesterday talking with Casey and Jen and going over what the problems were. So, yeah. it really was an unusual situation. Um, so, I'd actually like to make the motion right now that we not sign this MV, this contract at this time. The problem is, if we don't sign this contract, the, the, it, it has to do with school curriculum. This is really what it is, this healthy soil. That, that means all the teachers that we've lined up, um, it's not going to happen. You know, and I, I, I'm, I strongly support a planner and hiring a planner, and I strongly support us moving forward with that. But the problem is the job market, I just want you to understand, the job market and how long it takes to go through personnel and come up with a job description and then post it and all that, mm -hmm. we're done the school year. This, is, this contract is for the curriculum this year, and it also... Um, dovetails with the, the consultant, um, Keith Goltenberg from Regenerative Design in Greenfield, has the state contract for healthy soil. I am on the state commission for soil health, I mean soil, um, water and conservation, and I'm on the subcommittee that is trying to start up this healthy soils in the state. We have a $165 million budget, and we haven't met yet. To, to figure out how we're moving forward. But we want to take advantage of Keith, who is the consultant on this, the vendor, and, and do it with our kids that will align it with the state. And hopefully, once we get 
their curriculum in the frontier that we can, you know, it will be a year-to-year -year thing that we can update fairly easily. If we don't do this, then if we don't sign this contract, then we are not having this curriculum in the school. I don't, I just don't see the value in this contract for the amount of money that the contract costs for what we, what we would get. But do you have a problem with $35,000. Yes, but that is him going over and consulting with the teachers, working up the, cons the curriculum yeah, with the that's teachers. That's a huge amount of money. Yes, but... $35,000? Yes, but the hours it takes to generate... This is a new curriculum. That's like a position for, for a whole year on top of, you know, I just, I don't know. I just think it's a lot of money, and I don't see the value in it it's, yet. It's 70, is it $75 an hour, Casey? $80 oh, an hour. $80, $80 an hour. $35,000. Yes, but Trevor, it's $80 an hour for those hours. And, and $75 is cheap, is, or $80 is cheap. We yeah. were paying more but before. That equates to approximately five months of full-time right. work. I just don't see the value. We don't see that being done. Yeah, I don't um, want I, 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 you know. I know. Well, it's and fine. If it's, we don't want to do it, and it's I, okay. And I understand the importance of it. It's, there's a way that we can, we can streamline monitor the contract so it just addresses that one topic and not everything else in MVP. Well, it, it, ad it addresses... Hold on. It's like 442 hours. Yes. So... So, task one is to continue the green infrastructure policy implementation, which is promoting use of green street facilities and infrastructure in public and private development, and promote climate resiliency in public buildings and infrastructure. So, it, there's a description of that. Task two is the climate science class programming and student engagement that Carolyn was talking about. And there's several subtasks. That's what makes it complex when you're going back and reporting. Right. Um, and then task three is the Healthy Soils Pilot Demonstration Program, and that's something that Carolyn's wanted to do for quite a while. Um, there is something somebody that has Keith Zaltzberg. Keith Zaltzberg from Zaltzberg. Regenerative Design in Greenfield. So that would cover that's task fifteen thousand for regenerative design. Yes. Plus and then another ten thousand dollars for the consultant. Right. And then the public participation and community engagement. So it would be another climate resiliency forum that hopefully we can engage even a bigger group than happened last February. Uh, uh, just February, by the movement I was that we've just had. Say February twenty ninth of twenty twenty. Twenty twenty, yeah. Not sorry. Not twenty one. Not, yeah. <laughs> twenty just before we got locked down. That was good. It was a good program. Um, so it takes a lot of hours to, you know, put that together. It does. And so that's, that's a part of it is it takes, it's, it's hours that we're spending as in-kind match. But I think what we noticed is we were spending a lot more time than was even captured in the grant. So you've got four tasks. There's several subtasks. And um, I think... It's up to you guys. I think I would consider, if there was something you don't like, that maybe we consider streaming it down, on notifying, notifying the state. It would mean the contract here would get streamed down. The two things that Carolyn's very interested in are the healthy soils and the climate engagement with the kids. Um, but the public participation and community engagement continues the effort. So it's up. And to some extent, the work in the beginning, the green infrastructure policy implementation. I mean, that can be put on hold for our planner. I, if you can does split it, it I, out. I think it might intersect between the public participation and community you know, engagement. I, I don't know. The unfortunate but, part about it, I look at it, is the only way we're going to be able to take three steps forward is if we actually take one step backwards right now. And that's fine. And backtrack. I mean, that's what and it just, um, it just, you know, um, 
because, you know, Trevor just figured out this 442 hours, um, you know, the time I spent in the town office and looking at things, I think we're spending identical hours on these grants and this M these MPP projects. I was six hours here yesterday. Yeah, so. and it's just, you know, I was here this morning and then I was here again this afternoon. Um, it's just, you know, um, you know, I mean, there isn't one of us that isn't to... putting uh, a lot of hours in. Yeah, I'm kind of the back door guy. I don't come out front on a lot of things, but, you know, um, just the way I do things, and it's just, you know. It's, uh, it's fine. It's just that teachers are expecting this. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. And, and, we need to and there's nothing saying that the teachers can't do it on their own and develop their own curriculum. Do, uh, do we if need these to... are, you know, science teachers, they should be able to. I know the MTA that's in some of the things, but I mean, you know, um, they're probably... I think it's important work to do. Do we need to pay Regenerative 16000 and uh, the consultant another ten for kind of the same work? I, I, I'm just wondering... Well, if Chris, hiring... what, Chris, what Chris is doing is organizing the teachers. He's done outreach to the teachers. He's got them all set up. And then Keith Boltenberg is coming in as the Healthy Soils. Right. Uh, he has the state contract for the Healthy Soils, and he's going to be implementing the $165 million budget for Healthy Soils with the help of Bob O'Connor from EEOA. Okay, so it makes sense to have take advantage of the fact that he's just in Greenfield. He's a wicked nice guy. I've been bugging him for two or three years to please come in and work with us and be a pilot program that our kids at Frontier can advance, take advantage of. So that's where the um, excitement came. Also, we felt that um, our February 29, 2020 climate forum was so successful, and I've had multiple requests that when are we going to do that again? But of course, the pandemic's spinning up. No one knows what's going to happen. So. I mean, if we don't want to, if we want to push that off for another year, that makes sense. I, I mean, I'm not, I, I'm already, this is August, and I'm already, you know, locked down to four or five meetings a day, three mm -hmm. nights a week. Yeah. I mean, this is like craziness already. So do I want to take on a climate forum? Um, probably not. So mm -hmm. I don't have any problem moving, you know, not doing some of this, but I, I, I am disappointed that we wouldn't support what's happening at Frontier because I, I we have total engagement from the science teachers and they're excited about it. The kids can, the Galinskys have volunteered to use their fields for, um, you know, to have the kids go across the street so there's no cost for busing or anything. Kids can just walk from Frontier to Galinsky's field. They can do sampling on the soil. It's, it's about carbon sequestration, it's about stewardship. Kids don't have the opportunity to have connection with the land like they used to. If you grew up here, you worked in the cucumbers, you worked the tobacco, you did all kinds of stuff growing up, but that doesn't happen anymore. And so the opportunity for stewardship is very important. And so we have the Deerfield Academy kids can walk up to the North Meadows and um, do the sampling there. I mean, it's just, it's a very exciting opportunity. And I think probably Deerfield Academy would go forward without the support one way or the other, but that would not ha happen at Frontier. And I've, I'm an advocate for our public schools. Yep. You made a motion, right? I did, but there wasn't a second. Not yet. Hmm. I just, um, do we have to vote this tonight? Can we can we discuss it a little bit and figure out? We can think about it some more. Just, I just we need to make a decision. I understand. If we can make a decision by tomorrow, it will be fine. The reason why is because we have to let the schools know that they have to come up with something different. Mm -hmm. I mean, school starts tomorrow, yep. so either going forward and they're going to support this activity, or they're going to have to come up with something different. And we can, and it's not fair to them to Understood. pull it no, out, it. the yeah. rug out from under them. Mm -hmm. I get it. I just, I'm just concerned about the amount of money that we're spending in the last two years alone. It's just a, a, an exorbitant amount of money. And, a, and I just think of what we could be doing with that money. There's also a corresponding amount of time 
in the grant administration. Right. I am not That's saying that it has been about grants. No, it's not. I, I am not years. arguing that it isn't. We could have been more efficient, maybe. Mm -hmm. But I will also argue that this is the going. This is a, the that. bottom of yep. of the going rate. This is not an excessive rate. If we had the FERCOG write this grant, we would be paying the same amount. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say one thing. I mean, if if the board wants to continue with the grant, then I think everyone needs to understand that it takes up an inordinate amount of right. time. And, and it stops us from doing other projects. And when I have to say no to somebody, I would hope you wouldn't get upset when I point out that it's because of the things that are in this grant. Because it, there's, we can only run so fast and so far. Yeah. I, and when I I'm understand for myself. I'm speaking for my staff. Yeah. Yeah. Casey, I understand what you and Jen had to put up with, and Brenda. We're not done yet. I know, but I have to say it is related to the con contractors that we use, the three contractors that we had problems with. We uh, we had four contractors. One of them was very good and performed. We had three that were mediocre would be the best description, and it's it really not just related yeah. to that. I know, I know, but I it did not help. It yeah, did not but help, but some of it's also the way the grants are constructed. Yes. Right. Yes. They're great the and uh, administrative. I agree. I agree. And then, it's terrible. And the unfortunate part is we're not getting any support from the from state, the, from the person who wrote the grants for the administrative part of it. It's just kind of dumping in and say, okay, it's yours, you take care of it. Uh, for the amount of money we're For the amount of money, it's. Well, I'll, I'll make a caveat to that. So part of his accomplishment, part of the grant scope includes his monthly reports to the program coordinator at the yep. state. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, in, in the way these were written before, that's why I added language, in the way these were written before, that was parsed from the actual granted administration, the fiscal administration. And so that's the piece that, because things are very complex and because it, it's difficult, if you don't get a single bill for a single task, it's very hard to cor correlate, so that made it more complex. If the board wants to move forward with this, I've had a conversation with Brenda and Jennifer about how we could make some changes to address that, but fundamentally, at the end of the day, if the grant support doesn't happen when we're doing the final report, it leaves the town scrambling like we have been for the last five days. And I made this clear. All we're not yep. getting done. Um, because it does impact what else we can get done. But I understand that the board has had a climate resiliency movement, and I respect that. Mm -hmm. yep. It's just there is so much other work that needs to happen like that that it makes it difficult for us to pivot and focus on something that is difficult even for our regional coordinator to parse. Yep. Can I make and he a said that. Jennifer, go ahead. Um, I, I just want to say it's like if we don't get, if, if we don't have the assistance to help us bring this grant together at the end, what I'm doing for the past few days, you're talking five, over $500,000. That's, that's a lot honestly, of money. That's a lot of money. And it's like for, for somebody that's, you know, to, to gather that kind of information, it's talk about stressful, <laughs> you know, trying to make yeah. sure not knowing who the vendors all were and what tasks went to what year and what job and and then the vendors don't write the correct project on their bill and so on and so forth. I mean, I can just go on. I'm just saying it's like over $500,000 that if we had somebody in-house that was able to do it quickly and efficiently and were followed through. Um, Managed it all the way from the beginning. It's a, it's a hard part. Well, it's not that financial. Building the history is what the problem was. And, the, and the having three very marginal contractors was gross. I, I, I mean, that was terrible. Mm -hmm. Well, there's also the confusion about which task you had in these the way they wrote the bills was incorrect. That and the fact that the tasks 
were almost the same in two right. different fiscal years. So that made it hard for the regional coordinator. I got off the phone with him at, yeah. what, 4.45, Jennifer? Yeah, I left and that. And we we're still parking that. Yeah. Yeah, so, it's, it's hard you know, it's, with it's the tasks for. With different fiscal years, it said Kelleher Drive culvert, but one was the design and then one was, I mean, it was just, it's very, very complex. And Andrew sat there and they said, even though we also um, had our grants go into the next year because of COVID. So, I mean, that's not, Obviously, anybody's not a right. so it's just a situation that happens, but right, the complexity right. of it it's very, yeah, very and, and complex. The, yeah, had three extensions, you know, that that was oh, awful. We and part of that was COVID, yeah. yeah. So, that, I mean, we didn't have difficult that was not a normal situation. No, we no. all get that. Yeah, it's nothing. just what came, what one of the takeaways was is we need acknowledgement on the part of the person that is providing the service that there is a end of the envelope like end of the grant re yeah. responsibility that we are struggling with because we didn't write the grant didn't write the grant or manage it or and manage so if, you, if we're managing the money that intersect needs to be more robust but fundamentally it could take away from our ability to handle other things well, not only take away from what you can do, but there's also a possibility that we might not get some reimbursement that we're expecting. That's entirely possible. So, um, because of the federal or state guidelines. So, no. you know, uh, the figure I have in my mind right now is with, there's a potential we might lose $21,000 in funding because of some of the things that are because happening. Because of some of the movement, because so, of some um, of the billing, you know, because they weren't clear, the regional you know, office wasn't clear again, with some instructions. It's like in the medical field, it wasn't coded right. <laughs> so, okay, we're not going to pay it. But um, Well, I, I mean, I, that's directly, I feel like, Andrew. Andrew gave, gave us the extension, you know, from the state. He gave us the extension, and to say that now that, oh, well, you should have sent it in was... That that he changed the situation. Uh, did you find that email where he gave us the extension? He actually Jennifer found too, and we're working with Andrew because I think he may have walked back some of that. Oh, thank but you, the, thank you, Jennifer. The point is finding that email. The point is, is we're working really hard to finish this up, and Andrew's working as hard as we are. Um, but we all have other things that are also on our task list, and so moving into a new grant series without acknowledging the fact that there needs to be some changes for it, oh, it, it I, isn't yeah. prudent. And you're absolutely correct on that. I think if we can, if we can table this till tomorrow at least. Okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, so no, I'm fine with that. withdraw my motion. Withdraw your motion. I, I just and want us to be able to make... We'll we'll table this until tomorrow night. I'll yeah. I'll that motion. Uh, I, I'm, Any further discussion? No. Well, no. I just want to say I, we just need to make a decision by tomorrow I so understand. that we yeah, can no. let Frontier know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Carol. Aye, Trevor. Aye, David. Okay, so we'll take this up. Now, do you realize tomorrow evening I won't be able to get on until about 7.30, so. Yeah. Well, right. The meeting doesn't start until 7.30. Yeah. It doesn't start until 7.30. Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. We, we, we went around your schedule. Okay. Yeah. We worked around it. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, was there a hand up? Lily, have there a question? Was, she, she put it up and put it down. Okay. Uh oh, we she go. just tried to talk. That was me. Okay. I oh. uh, no, I swear I thought her mic went live. <laughs> so the next thing, uh, mail? Any? Anything on mail that you just want to discuss? Oh, wait. I have. Did I? Sorry. Can I just. I'm sorry to interrupt, David. Okay. I thought I had a memo. So, speaking of CARES Act 1, okay. um, we need to keep the folks that we have been, that have been providing technical assistance and support. So, I would respectfully request that the board approve their ongoing stipend until the grants are done. FEMA DR446, which is the FEMA grant, and CARES, um, because the two correlate, 
and some of that support is ongoing because our remote participation is also ongoing. Do we have enough money, do you think? Yes. And, okay. Then that's fine. Yes. I'm good with that. I mean, uh, the only reason I asked if we had enough money, because I don't mind spending ARPA money for something like that going forward either. Going forward, we may have to revamp. It. If we continue in this model, we're going to have to address it. Um, my colleague, Margaret Nardowitz, who is in town, um, she had the same problem last year where the staff members that were handling the meetings just hit a wall where you, they just couldn't do 12 hours three, I mean, yeah, three days a week. So difficult. it may be that we have to make some adjustments and and know, deal with the meetings a, lot, a little bit a lot, differently. We put a but, lot of meetings on you guys this week. I know that. And so, and I'm sorry. But right now, it's very helpful for the technical assistance yep. because you know, Alex is doing minutes. He runs a couple meetings, not very yeah. many, but he's been doing minutes. Mm -hmm. And those are remote meeting minutes. So they yeah. play, yeah. you know, yeah. right into that. Yeah. And George has been doing the so, CARES, CARES, the CARES. correlation between CARES and FEMA. So he's working directly with Brenda. And his familiarity with the portal is making it easier for us to get to Project 3. Okay. We did okay. get, oh, I found it while you guys were talking. We got, there's an obligation for us for 41,455.78, which is actually our second project. So we're waiting to see if FEMA is gonna give us any comments. MEMA, we finally got a new MEMA guy. We've gone through three. And MEMA coordinates with FEMA with this DR446, which is the <sighs> FEMA grant. And FEMA held this up for quite a while. So George and Brenda and I met with this new guy and his boss, and we're working to figure out what FEMA's holdup is. They've approved project two. We point blank said to MEMA, we haven't turned project three in because we've been, you guys have been, you know, FEMA's been sitting on this since last September, almost a year. So, they're reaching out to FEMA to get the comments. So if we have something we need to address with FEMA, we will. Okay. Um, but we're also throwing, just so you know, the vaccination reimbursement. Um, George is working on that too. Okay. So he's coordinating. So this is what I mean is you've got somebody who knows how to use that portal and is coordinating with staff. There's still time that's being taken away from what Brenda can do because she's part of that reporting. If we get a grants administrator that's strictly a grants administrator, that person can do those financial things. Yeah, okay. So that's just my plug. Okay, I'll shut up now. Mm -hmm. Are you using a motion on this? Oh, yes. 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 A motion to approve the continuation of technical assistance support stipends. I second that. Okay. Any further discussion? No. Hearing none. All those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Carolyn McKinney. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Oh, we got our, did I tell you? God, I sent out an email. ARPA? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The what? We got, so the, remember we were having a struggle figuring out where the county money was going to go because we worked, we, our number? county's two, I can't remember now. Two and a half. And then Barbara told me and I can't remember, I'm sorry. Because it should be a total of five something. Well, the first tranche was a little over 250, or a little under 250, which was half of the 500,000 right. that was supposed to come directly to the town. The issue, one. well, the issue was how do we get the county money? And so they finally processed their their yeah. you know format of how they're going to do this. So they sent it directly to the town. But they had to, DLS had to take all the treasury information and sort of formulate that. So we received it. So we've got over 400,000 now. I still don't think but we also enough. have two tranches for each one of those pockets of money coming through next year as well. But if it's half and half, that's still not enough money. It should be 1.4. And if we're getting, you know, we're supposed to get 1.4. Right. But you're going to get two, you're going to get another tranche of half of what would have come straight through for either section. So but that would be, each one I believe was 50% and 50%, right? So if we got 250 and 250, and then, then we wait again, so, we get 250, so 250, are you saying that we're supposed to get 
400 and 400, and then we get 400 and 400 yeah. again? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, then that's, that's the correct. That's no, no. That, well, uh, let me talk Let's about talk about the money. The, yeah. the point is, is the yeah. last the, the last the amount money. I heard right. the last amount I heard is 1.4 right. something to us total. Total. Like I know so, it takes two years to come, but I just it takes two years. But I'm afraid to just hearing like 250 and then 250. Well, the right. like, was 251. I agree. I, agree. Mean, I want to yeah. make sure that we're we track down the 1.4. Right. And I don't care if it so comes means, five times as long as it comes. That, <laughs> right. That means we're supposed to get around. They hadn't, well, I didn't see their final numbers, and it's probably because I missed that in the million DLS. Yeah. <laughs> no, I there is around that. 700 we're supposed to get now, and that was why we were thinking of the Leary lot from a grant point of view, less hassle, mo it would suck up a lot of money, and it, w and it would be one big, giant, good thing. Maybe we would hire Berkshire Design to do some more stuff, but we could get a start on our stuff, and we would use the money for economic development, which it's eligible mm -hmm. for, and it would be less work for the staff because it's instead of one item. it was one large item, yes, we'll do the social work or we'll pay some stipends or whatever, but the majority of the money is sucked up in one project that will be easy to document. Now, I would like well, no, I'm just saying, so we have 700, supposedly, this to work with now, and then we have another 700-ish coming again, because we're supposed to get 1.4 from what our listing was. Yeah, but I, I have not seen... I haven't seen... I mean, that's why I just want you to... Up half this year. Yeah, I, I just want to make sure you're checking that we get what we're supposed to get. And these are the ARPA funds. These ARPA. are ARPA. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, these are but ARPA these funds. are the funds that we get possibly also used for the renovation of this building to yes. incorporate our staff. Possibly. Well, if you're looking at it from an HVAC, that's a given. Yes. They will allow you to do an HVAC yes. we'll project. We take out the old boiler so system, the tanks, and put in the new HVAC, HVAC replacement. replacement. And when that comes out, we have a big empty space that we can put offices in. I do also want to talk about HVAC at the elementary school. That has to get done. And it, I was talking to Darius about it. I can get more information, talk to you next meeting, but... Please try to get more information so we can sort of look like what we're going to do, okay. money-wise. I will. Okay. The school gets their own... Our they do. They, they do. do. And I think if we did a partnership with the school, because it's our building, but mm -hmm. I think we could come together and, and do something over there, because climate change isn't changing. It's only getting hotter, and I think you know, they're starting it's, school tomorrow. I, I think it, if, the, if the federal government is going to give us money for... Uh, of assist, you know, ventilation yeah. system. Let's take advantage of it because exactly. um, absolutely, climate change is happening, yep. and and it it's hot going back to school now. Yep. It's going to be hot at the end of the year. Yep. And um, not only about and that's going to change about air quality inside, right? And the temperature, well, and the humidity, moving, and, yeah, taking moving the in. humidity out and yeah, all kinds of things. Yeah. So okay. yeah, I would put my plug in here. My yeah. brother lives just outside of Seattle, and we've had more rain than them. <laughs> and they've had 100 And they've had 100, over 100 degree days. Yeah. And that is really unusual. I lived in Seattle for three years when I was first married. And I, and I can tell you that. Yeah. All right, hands up when you have a moment. Oh, go ahead. Jeff. Jeff. You could, you got to unmute him. Unmute them. My uh, iPad? Okay. Yeah, while we're, we're talking about the uh, HVAC system over there, uh, could that possibly, money possibly be used for the generator that was talked about also? Good thought, Jeff. Instead of using the generator, you mean put it into HVAC or you want to put the generator in finally? Maybe maybe do both. If, if, if yes. money, if there's enough money. Right. Okay. We could talk about that for sure. Just, I was just the thought. Yeah, yeah. What, when we finally sort out our ARPA funding, what we're going to do is um, I'll call or, you know, have whoever's going to chair the Capital Improvement Committee have us have a meeting, okay? Yeah, we definitely want a meeting for all, all that right. with finance. Yep, and, okay. um, that, that, that sounds good. Yeah, it, would, and it, would be, it would be... I'm just speaking as a resident here. I'm not speaking yeah. representing... Yeah, but I, I'm asking I'm asking you as a fellow committee person that, or telling you as a fellow committee person that we'll probably have a, you know, an off meeting.
to put it into the schedule and make sure the Capital Improvement Committee um, is supportive of it. It is a, a selectman's decision. It's because it's money that comes in. It's just a selectman's we'll vote. But page. we still want to be on the same page. We want to go through the Capital Improvement Committee, okay? Yep, makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Yep, the process we used earlier on in the year for our budgets and stuff, having the finance, capital, and select board all meeting at the same time was very beneficial. Yeah. We got a lot of feedback from you guys. Yeah, it worked well. So, so that's, that's a very good process. Um. So my plug is we need to be thoughtful about how we're going to spend the ARPA funds right. and not oh, yes. need your need no, your react. Yeah. Yeah. I know we are being really cuz and, and the thing is is you have three years to spend the funds. Mm -hmm. So let's be thoughtful. Yep. Um you know, I also know that, you know, Darius does have his own money. Yep. So collaborating, we actually the four town administrators and Darius have a meeting next week. So I'm sure he's gonna talk to us about some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. But maybe maybe having those conversations with capital and and right. finance would be helpful. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think Just it's take really temperature I, on some of this stuff. I think it would be important to put um, air conditioning in at Frontier as well. You know, HVAC system in Yeah, yeah. I don't know what they have over there. Well, well they, I, have, they have well, they have yeah, they what have their own. very little. I yeah. would like to talk to Darius and see what he's thinking mm -hmm. because he may have something on his radar screen. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But yes, climate change is making it difficult for kids to be in school without air conditioning mm -hmm. at this point. Okay. So, so we were working on some last minute changes to the zoning bylaw proposals that I was hoping, Carolyn and I were hoping to have tonight. I was working on it tomorrow. right up till 5.30. She exactly. literally was working and yep. I had been working with Adam earlier and, and really just conversing it. to try to nail some things down. Okay. Um, we don't have them ready, but right. I expect changes later tonight. So I will push out what those are in preparation for tomorrow night's meeting. The, the thing okay. that, um, uh, that I worked with Adam on were some of the discretionary things. So he's coming up with um, we we wanted to do 25% mm -hmm. open space mm -hmm. um, with the the thought that it could be negotiated down to 15%. If somebody say you ripped up a 400 car or 500 car parking lot and put pervious pavers in, you know that's like going to be like a million dollar project. So okay. You're going to do that, then then you you know maybe you can negotiate it down. But that would be with the special permitting authority, which is the planning board. Planning board, yeah. right? Yeah. So they'd have to go to the planning board when they when they do site plan. You know, over this tourist let, overlay, this they start with 25 percent. But if they wanted to open space set mm -hmm. aside, but if they wanted to say go down to 15 percent because they want to do more development or whatever. Then it would have to be for something good, right? Like, well, like a, a the planning board paper. put in those, those, yeah. those right. It would, benefits and takeaways, and it would yeah. be something that they would negotiate with the planning board. Yep. The other thing um, was the parking, and um, Lisa's version um, did not encompass warehouse, you know, requirement for warehouse, and I agree <coughs> with that because um, manufacturing. You know, a lot of it, you got equipment and you have few people. So for every, however, I can't even remember now because it's so crazy, but whatever the per um, square footage was one parking lot is more than enough because you have so much equipment in there. Right. So Lisa was charging, you know, or the calculations for the parking lot were um, just the manufacturing and then there was a, you know, the calculations for, you know, the restaurant um, retail area that's accessory to poor area, whatever, was five. And I and I think, you know, per whatever the square foot, I think it's a thousand square foot, but whatever, uh, or a hundred square feet, um, whatever the per was. So it seemed like it was less complicated to go with Lisa's version and you and the numbers almost were identical. And then the other thing was um, 
the cap of 150,000 for uh, brewery, craft, meter, you know, mm-hmm. distillery, and all that. Well, there's 107 already existing, 107,000 square feet. So the 150,000 cap is very reasonable, actually, because that only gives them another 40,000 square feet. 42 or something. Yeah, 42,000 square feet to do additional on the rest of the 22 acres. So if if that cap is acceptable, then why wouldn't it be acceptable to us? So, and then if, and if, you know, 20 years from down the line, they want to go, uh, you know, that. above that, then they'd have to go to the zoning board or something. Yeah. You know, that wouldn't, so those are the kind of discretionary things that Adam is fixing in the okay. thing so that we get it tonight. Um, Dave, was there anything else that we had talked about? I know oh, we, oh, we, the we, overlay. We talked about the different overlays uh, between the municipal and entertainment. Uh, so, okay, so going to the municipal, um, Adam said my, it was my thought to do the overlay district for the municipal because we needed to cover the commercial downtown and um, the um, center village residential area. Adam said that's so much complicated. It's a lot more work. The idea would be that if you just keep it a footnote, but say the commercial district one, which is the Leary lot, which we were concerned about. So just include the footnote, Central Village District and the commercial one, which encompasses the Leary lot. And then it's still a very simple, just footnote. And that makes more sense than the overlay. I know you did this, Dave, here, Mm -hmm. but I think if we looked at the commercial um, one, can Jennifer, can you pull up our zoning by any chance? Do you have the zoning picture, the pretty map? Um, That Dave and Trevor could see zoning commercial, because I I don't offhand. Do Do you want the map, or do you just want, like, GIS map? You want the printed uh, map? Say that again. You know the October, you know the October six map. Do we ha- we have that electronically, right? Yeah. If not, I can go grab it from the office. No, give well, me. A what I yeah. What I what I want is to show zoning commercial zoning one, so that um, we can be reminded where that is, and then also the CVRD. So it's clarified tomorrow with the planning board. That that's what's going forward. If that's what Dave and Trevor agree with, okay. Adam Adam felt that that was the simplest, non. Um, I mean, anything else. The overlay district is very complicated because you got to rewrite everything. And he felt Even that Lisa. Oh no no no! Because we're doing that already. Yeah. It's just after planning board's meeting. I realized. I went down and I talked to Bob, and I realized that pre- that I, I didn't. I didn't realize. I thought Central Village District after encompassed encompassed that. It, yeah, Leary lot discovered it. Leary lot and Elm Street is commercial, yeah, so and, that's not. And here again, I was I was confused why that was C1 because that was a house. I know. That, no, but it, it was existing. That was a pre-existing yeah, structure. Yeah, C1 would cover all of Jerry's house. Can you see it? Yes, yeah, she's got them. Yeah, I yeah. can see that. Yep. So, um, Center Village District covers the Leary lot. Yes. Well, covers, I don't know what. No, C1 it doesn't is. cover. What C1 is, is C1. Center, Center Village. C1 Village. Uh, C1 is small business. I have to ask him. But that. that's all. I mean, look, when I look at C1, it encompasses the Leary lot. No, it's the C1 does. Right. The CRD does not. Exactly. Exactly. But yes, so, so that's we're, the reason in our meeting wouldn't allow us to do anything on the Leary. Lot. Though, in C1, it covers this lot, right? Yes, but it doesn't cover the park. So it has to be in both. It has to be in both. And, right. okay. and, and it was my and assumption. You put a in that, right? Yeah. So yeah. what you do is you just allocate that, yeah. like she said. Okay. He just modifies, Adam just modifies the footnote. No, Adam is Perfect. rewriting it to include C1 and Central Village District. And when we were talking with the planning board on Monday, we were, talking to we were sent to the village yeah. district because we thought that it encompasses it. So this actually, are you all okay with that? 
Dave, would yeah. you look at that, please, and make sure you're okay with that? Hold on. I mean, this isn't as good a map as what she had up, but, but it, you know, this is Park Street, the common, it covers all of this. Yep. But, I mean, that's really anywhere we're going to do anything anyway. Yep. And then the CBRD is a little bit bigger, obviously. Uh, let's see if I can bring this up a little bit. T1 is over here as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, this is yeah. part of my body piece. See. Is it? I think so. Yeah. So that makes sense to me. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So just a footnote and that could open it up for us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, as long as we agree that it's C1 and CVRD, then we can d discuss it with the planning board mm -hmm. and it will be printed that way um, in the paper on Friday and it meets all the deadlines Monday. for uh, Monday. I mean, yeah. Friday. Well, we have to okay. get it into so it. It has to be published. By Monday at the latest, so okay. I'm about to send Jennifer a text. <laughs> yeah. See, it's Ready coming, Jennifer. Jennifer. Mm -hmm. Well, Adam is supposed to have the finished copy to send out to yeah. the planning board. We should have it in the morning. So yeah. the footnote but will I say, make sure that the ad if gets you guys it agree, time. it's yeah. CVRD and C1. Yeah. And so that takes care of our municipal. It limits, it's not town wide, which seemed to be the, what the problem was for most people. Most people just you know, that didn't vote for it, felt, you know, a town-wide, open-ended, you know, municipal authority can come in at any time and do this. Mm -hmm. However, no matter what project we have to do, has to go through um, capital planning, has to go through the finance committee, has to go to town meeting vote, has to go to, um, you know, debt, ex you know, debt uh, exclusion on our taxes. So it, it's foolish to say there's not a whole bunch of checks and balances on it, too. There are. Yeah. And we had mentioned that, but I don't know that I know, but people are, people are worried. So this, to me, if we limit it to the um, CVRD and Commercial One, then we are definitely limiting what projects. But it will, I think it will encompass, as far as you can tell, it will encompass any project we're thinking of, right? Yes. Does, does the C1 go over the four-way intersection, Trevor? What's that again? I just wanted to make sure the CVRD or the commercial oh, one is over the, the four-way intersection down here by the oh. town common? Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, so yeah it, this it, whole area right here. It takes into consideration down. Cumberland Farms? It goes down to, okay. yeah, it encompasses okay. Cumberland Farms. Yep. Okay. I just want to make sure if the, if the, that the old right, Cumberland so. Farms is included. Right. That's... Uh, that's the, that's the common right here. South Main Street. Yeah, South yep. Main here. We'll be the um, yep. assessor's map to open. It wasn't working, so you want to see it. Okay, that's okay. I think we got it. Okay, so Casey, that's okay. Do you want us to vote on that? Um, no, not yet, right? Do you want to vote on it tonight, or do you want to? Well, no, we I mean, don't have tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Okay. That way you have language. Okay. Okay. okay, so now now what we're doing is the overlay. We have to agree on the overlay map that Casey can forward to the planning board for the tourists. So, Dave, this was this one. Yep. This one. And this is Yankee Candle? That's Yankee Candle. This is 116 right here. Okay. So it's either side of 116. Yep. Okay. So, and this is the property uh, opposite. Yep, yeah, just to the west of five and ten. Okay. And that does not encompass any of this area or this area. Okay. Um. All right. So, can you, if that's okay with Trevor, it's okay with me. Trevor, look at it, and then we'll hand it to Casey. Yeah, I've looked at that. So, I'm print out. She's going to talk with Adam, right? I have so we'll to talk see all this Adam. stuff tomorrow, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, okay. I'll do the best I can. I'll so, scan. Casey, okay. you're understanding what Dave is saying on that? So, the only thing I wasn't sure about, so... Because I put sure. a couple areas... Do you have a highlighter? Right. Just I don't. double highlight what right. Dave has agreed to. So, and oh, Trevor's okay. agreed to it. Yeah. Why don't you circle it for me? So just those things. Hmm? Make sure you just clarify again. So it's, it's this still one, it's this one, including this, mm -hmm. and this one. Yes, and 
actually thought that this this is from North Street. Yeah. You know, I didn't know if we wanted to do an entertainment overlay there. I don't I don't think there's enough space to right. do anything. I don't think so, right? Do we need to? I don't know. Um you probably can by permit we can right. we can uh, they can be allowed there because of what it is. Yeah. But I didn't yeah, that was just a question mark in my right. mind, so that's why I put this that's as a combination of municipal right? and entertainment here. My my only problem with that is that you know we have the twenty five, we have the twenty five percent open space, and we have the parking requirement, and and they, they already don't comply. So. Uh. Well, this one here on North Street does. Oh, it does. Yeah. There's enough space. Well, let's include the North Street one. Because this is this is where the barbecue place is. Yeah. And this oh. is the empty lot right behind it. Oh, so right. let's include that. Let's include that because you you could do the you would have some negotiating for yeah. the twenty five percent and the parking. And I think both those parcels are owned by the same person. All right, let's do that then. But so not not up here. No, this is um, this is gory fabrication. Yeah. And this is the uh, technology. Oh, place. right. Yeah, not This is new old. Right. So this is that empty lot yep. between, this is the, the barbecue place and right. the empty lot. Yep. So, yeah, let's do that, include that. Okay. So is there any other place you guys want to think about having that type of overlay? Not at this moment. We, I, we I, have to make a change down the road. We'd have to, yeah. We could We could expand it at a later date. We could expand it at a later date, but I, I think that's enough for now. Because that's a pretty big... He's getting a different color mark. Oh, okay. It stands out a little bit better. Just so you're not confused, because there's two smaller parcels. Yeah. You're both on one on 116, and then, you know, up and down 5 and 10, yep. Yankee Candle. But it makes sense to have those parcels that Dave... That's why I wanted Dave to look at them and make sure he was... Um, Coming up with the map. You want me to forward that to the Adam planning Ray? board? Yeah. Yeah, Adam, are you going to forward it to Adam and the planning board? I told them we were um, going to come up with a map tonight. tonight. Thank you, Trevor, for doing that. Thank you. Scan that. All right. All right. Okay. Um, the next items are the uh, approval of the uh, recommendations of the planning board for the senior center and the health. Um, I haven't really had a chance to read these. So the senior center director you had already addressed. But they requested that you reconsider the title um, and and call it an elder services director. And well, they have to approve the job description anyway, but as they were going through it, they had some talking points. So I'm bringing it to you and saying- Is this already you. posted, I thought? No. Oh, it's not posted. I, I was about to post it, and then this happened. So. Mm -hmm. They made a recommendation. They approved it in, in its in this with a request that you consider changing it. Yeah. I I just fear that elder services is actually a more um, used term lately. It's changing. But does that encompass a fifty-five-year-old person? If we're trying to get into this senior center thing. Okay, so nobody asked me that question. I could have. I, I just kind of feel like it. Um, I worry that. I mean, I get where it's coming from, but I, our goal, you know, at this on the board of oversight, is to really try to attract younger seniors and right. 
and I don't know if and so the elder term services. seniors is people. Yeah. People find that a little. I think bit. it's more offensive to be called an elder than a senior. Oh God. <laughs> So I don't know. Yeah. I mean, so, I don't care what people want I to get on. I'm, I'm completely agnostic and kind of open to learning about this. I could be missing something, and I'm well, willing to be taught me see um, find and educated on this. But I feel like I don't want to approve it today because it kind of gives me a well. We need to get the job description out, and I think the job description. I told them there was the there was a push for that, and there's only one thing that they asked me to make a change in terms of the job description, and that was hold on. I put it up. They want other elder concerns. I don't have, I don't have a concerns. problem. That's, yeah. I don't have a problem in the job description talking about elders, but right. the, you know, over 55 you know, is generally at the elder center. Well, and so that's a that's a point that in the midst of the discussion, I wasn't really thinking quite that way until afterwards. So, mm -hmm. you know, the personnel board approved it. They would prefer it if we changed the name. Because they do see, and, and this is an education thing that I was exposed to Monday night. They, what I'm told is the terminology is changing, and it would be useful if we could catch up with it. On the other hand, I, I understand what they're saying. I yeah. Think. But I have to say, everybody is understanding when you say senior center, it's over 55. And as Trevor said, the Younger seniors are not going to our senior center. We want someone that will handle and attract our younger seniors and have programming for younger seniors as well as older seniors, yep. elder seniors. The younger seniors like me. I don't know. So I'd like I to might. learn more about this a little bit. I, I know that I get my senior just <laughs> director at the moment. And if we just get it out there. Um, and and, and so leave the I said to them, I said it may be that they won't change. It's a lot better description than the way they described me. I'm not even old. answering and that and question. I, I don't, I next, don't so. mind. I don't <laughs> mind and other elder concerns right. in the job description. Okay, yeah, so let me read sense. to you. Uh, this will this will be our mini education for the night. So John Foresky sent me an email later because um, his spouse is in, on the Age Friendly Communities Project Steering Committee, and. She said that senior, she told him that the term senior is outdated. AARP and National Age Friendly right. Community Projects suggest using the term older adults rather than senior citizens or senior center. So right now we can't change the name of the center. I'm not sure how we do that, <laughs> like that. But older I want to recognize older he, adult he tried to help me understand it. I understand that, but older adult centers almost sounds like you're coming to an adult entertainment And day. so everybody perceives this a little bit differently. Um, <laughs> whatever the pleasure of the board is, I think we need more I can education on That's this only zoned on 116.5. In the meantime, no, when you approve not zoned properly. Like change that I made, please? The uh, elder and, uh, yes, yes, another elder. And, and I'm fine yeah. with that. Okay, of course. All right, so I'll go forward with this one. And I'll let them know, you know, they need some more education. The, the board we wants need to more, more about why that. Mm -hmm. And we have to go through a formal, um, this has to go through the boo, that has to come back to a recommendation. I explained that to them. Mm -hmm. so that's and that's why they said, okay, this is our recommendation. We hope you take and it. Both we already and don't have a senior board. director. Yeah. We'll I hope you. I represent that as. And, and we need make a sure we make up our minds. We need a before senior we center. make new signs and a week mm -hmm. later just decide to change the name. <laughs> right, absolutely. But we need a senior center director. I don't. Have, that's why I don't have a sign in front of my desk. We, we haven't had a director. I know. We'll and, a, and so we'll put a sign in front of your desk. You know, well, I think I think we have to be mindful of these types of things. I agree. We. Yeah. I agree. But, I agree. Yeah. I but, don't know if right this second is the time to pivot. And so I'm sort of agnostic on it too. I was listening to what they were saying and trying to incorporate some of it. Mm -hmm. um, and Jennifer Reynolds was there. She's our new member. And she had some really good points on both job descriptions, which is why I put them on as items un unanticipated, because I wanted to bring them to your attention. And because I think we're going to – so, first of all, we need to get the director's job out. Um, I, I – I am absolutely open to always being moving forward and right. changing terminology. I think we just need to understand but it, a little but bit I better. Just, right. I, number one, it's more cumbersome. Where's Lily? She I, could tell us this. 
<laughs> well, it's more cumbersome than people realize. We have to go through multiple committees. Right. You've yeah. got three committees to go through. Elder and housing committee? Yes. No, it's senior, senior housing. housing. It's senior housing. So this is the one time I need Lily to be on to, to yell at me so we'll, she can tell me what we'll I'm doing wrong. We'll regroup on the next meeting yeah. on this because I, I, I do want to. So she'll be on the call tomorrow. I do think it's important to make some changes, and I, I want to be cognizant of that. So I'm. I'm but we also need to take this back to the boo as well. Yeah. So Once it's probably not the right time to try to do this. Right. Um, because you know they they play a part in this as well. Yeah. So I will put that into the um the advertising plan. Okay. The Board of Health agent one. So I had said this when you first looked at the senior center or the director's job. I'll try to keep those two words out of it. This is the Board of Health agent is the new standard format. And I took this to personnel. It was one of the ones that I had been working on and I got some help from Dick on it, and I spoke. I had one question about it. Jennifer Reynolds found me some information Tuesday after the meeting about it. You'll see I highlighted one. Do they go one. overseas? Hmm? Do they go overseas? I'm like, where do they go? I don't know. I'm so confused. I'm going to get smacked with something quick. No, I can't do that. You're my boss. Overseas no. Yes. There's a reason Over I don't sit on that end anymore. <laughs> so if that's so that's a clerical error that I did not catch. I did not run spell check for the 57th time, but nope. I usually do. It wouldn't do. have picked it up because no. overseas is it's a real word. word. Yeah. yeah. So, but they did have some questions, and one of them was the registered sanitarian question. And so a registered sanitarian, I highlighted it on purpose because Jennifer Reynolds found me some information, and then I had a, the opportunity to talk to someone else. And so the reason you see that is because the state is beginning to encourage towns to hire people in these health positions with that kind of background. Yep. It gives them familiarity with the what they're seeing come in for septic plans and other types of documents. Mm -hmm. It also means if you're a registered sanitarian, you can write your own plan. So I think to some extent, it's they're encouraging a higher level of professionalism and more training. Well, the intern that we hired that's working with Dick now is going after that certification, isn't he? Yes. Um, so well, he's taking the soil evaluators yeah. class as soon as they put one on. It was on post. It was on hold because of the pandemic. It's been, yeah, it's been on hold for seven so, months um, or something. But once you get the soil evaluators, that's part of the registered sanitary. Right. Yeah. And because he's getting his master's in public health, he will be eligible for the registered sanitation because you have courses that you have to take to be a registered sanitation. Right. So he'll be eligible for that certificate once he gets the soil evaluator part mm -hmm. done because that's a field uh, certificate. Right. And that's different than the academic requirements for um, the register. But a lot of this position, a good portion of this position is field work. And so we were trying to, I was just trying to parse out what that looked like. And so there was some typos that they helped me catch. And I tried to catch that one, but didn't. <laughs> you know, the one thing I wouldn't mind adding to this would be, um, like, right, you know, regular regular presentations to the Board of Selectmen. Or the Board oh, of Health, um, excuse me, to the Board of Health. Is that in here somewhere? No. No, but um, not actually, Alex is going to do that. He's well, going to start doing that. Then it, it, you know, we should have that in it's there. It's difficult to get Richard in front of you guys. He'll come occasionally, but... No, I just think that it's important to, to um, give us an update on, okay, how many permits you've pulled, what, what's going on in town, what have you seen, what, what's going... You know, like every month or every even two months should be fine. See, I don't necessarily... I'm going to go out and on in here. Um, oh, and, you know, I know this is digressing a little bit, but, you know, there's... was issue with food trucks just recently... Uh, the town of Deerfield requires that when a food truck comes into town, that it is inspected mm -hmm. every time it comes into town. We actually lose money on it because we only charge 25 bucks. Yeah. But yeah. we feel like from a public safety point of view, um, the, the risk is much greater for people to get food illness, food 
tick-borne illnesses from a food truck versus the re our regular yeah. restaurant. We, we don't grant a year's license on a food truck. We don't have it. No. We've already agreed on that. Well, yep. I had a conversation with with Richard, and I think one of the things that could be very useful is to come up with a plan because food trucks are not going away. No. And I know not everybody likes food trucks, and I understand why, but food trucks are a part of the economic landscape, mm -hmm. and it does limit Deerfield. It, it limits how much we can get in terms of traffic for younger people. Younger people go to food. I go when I... I go to food trucks. I like food trucks. I, I, but to, to the point of inspection, it's very important to have those inspected because they're... They're producing a product that has a move. It's a moving kitchen. Yes. So we need to know whether it's safe. And I totally think that's a great idea. And I, I want to address that, but I also think there may be a way to manage it differently. And I mentioned that to Dick and I'd like to circle back around with him about it so that we could have a plan in front of you guys. You know, it might be that that's workable for both questions. You know, have a monthly certificate or something, but not a yearly certificate. Well, or something. I'm just spit, no. spitballing. Right I, can, now. I cannot support a year year no, permit. No, I, I don't think we should do a year. No. And it's just because they change a lot. But I could understand maybe a month to month inspection. If if they're in town that much. Yeah. Well, what but if we did I, it a year? Um, may I say something? How about we have a like a a year um, license, but then every event they need to have an inspection. So you have a base fee for the year. Yeah. So you have an annual permit, but you do a, you do that periodic inspection, so you're meeting the public health and safety needs. Right. The problem is the problem is you're going to create confusion, and you're going to get the marginal operators that will say, "Well, I have an annual permit." And they're not going to let us know every time they're in town. From a from a implementation and regulation point of view, we have to know where they're going to be so that we can give them a, a, a permit to be there at that place and we've had a chance to inspect them. If we give them an annual permit, Joe Blow is going to come into town and, and say, oh, I got an annual permit. Why did I have to get, you know, plead ignorance? And we have no control over where they are. I that town. happens with building permits all the time. It happens with building permits. That's right. But so, I think everybody needs to acknowledge yeah. this is this is an economic development thing that is happening. And yes. if we get behind but the eight ball, we're not why, going to be able right. to pivot. But Casey, we lose money. It costs us more money to go out and inspect those food trucks for twenty five bucks every time than not. But the reason why we do every inspection for every permit, even though we lose money, we'll get to you in a second, Jennifer, we'll is because it's so important to make sure that they are safe. I don't disagree. Then we need a streamlined permitting process that allows it to happen Jennifer, more quickly. Jen I think Jennifer and or they've come up with some way to do it electronically. So we know that they're in town, they can be issued electronically, and then we can go and do the permit, the inspection. So we're talking about permitting software for them, yep. the inspections department. I don't know if they have modules like that. I don't know either, but um, it's just, you know. I, I my need experience a solution, is based that's what I'm on the craft and fairs. Here again, I'm, I'm not a one to say that we lose money on every inspection because yes it does cost us more than twenty five dollars but we have staff that's here and they have to get inspected during the normal business hours. Right. But what I'm so, saying is no, no that's not true because we go out on weekends. Like the craft well, fair is on the weekends. Well but but what I'm saying is I and I don't mean to interrupt, but I will interrupt because my experience has been at the craft fairs. And the craft fairs have had um they ha are high-end food trucks, and there are multiple occasions over the years that the food trucks have been shut down by Dick and I because they were not up to the cleanliness and um, food That's safety fine. standards. Yeah. And that is the high-end food truck. Yeah. 
I'm just thinking, why can't we come up with a plan that works for yeah. the economic aspect of this that can bring people into town? Because, you know, Berkshire Brew is probably going to be doing more food trucks. Treehouse is probably going to be yes, doing they are. Uh, that's they right. are. We need a and, solution you know, before we're behind the hasn't been doing them, but there's nothing saying that they're not going to do them. I agree. Um, there's so, you know, we've got to have a process in place that really works. That's what I'm asking for. Yes. That's fine, but that's so, not an annual permit. No. Well, well, it could be an annual permit, but subject to a certain they, inspection. Yeah, but that just allows people. But part of that permitting process is they have to state, we have to put in there that they are going to tell us every time they're in town. I know. It's just... But let's wait till we have this something to put in front of you. Jennifer. Hi, thank you, Dave. Um, I just wanted to chime in. Um, when I had my dessert catering business, um, I would go and set up uh, in particular at the Glendale Ridge Vineyard in uh, West Hampton, Southampton, in that area. And um, I per se did not have a food truck, but their board of health um, issued a seasonal um, inspection where they would come out random um, and it was also for food trucks and they would let the Board of Health know where they were going to be for that particular season. Um, and obviously you would charge a higher fee than your $25, um, you know, and that would also allow the Board of Health to go and do random inspections as long as they're only at that one location. And I also had to provide, um, I believe the dates that I would be there, um, you know, like letting them know how frequent as a vendor that I was there. So I don't know if that information helps you at all to know that, you know, you could do it maybe by season, you do those random inspections and you charge a higher fee. Um, food trucks who want to come to a, a consistent area regularly, such as BBC, Treehouse or whatnot, um, usually those venues have an established relationship with the food truck um, you know, people who come. So I think that the majority, even if you were to bump it to $100 for a season, I think people would still come because their, um, you know, their return on that uh, fee is is a lot more than that, you know, what they're paying. Is there a serve safe requirement with food trucks yes. and yours? Yes. yes. Um, so serve safe certifications are required in order to get even the basic um food uh, license because majority of food trucks will have to get um, their license and certification. Like for example, the Maine's cousin lobster truck, my husband and I happen to go to at BBC. They have their license on the side showing that they were certified in you know, their local city or town in Connecticut. Um, and they also had other ones on the outside of them. So you have to have your serve safe also displayed as well as your allergen awareness. Um, those are usually required by at least one person working in the food truck, so that's a that's a state requirement as well. Yeah, I thought it was. I just I hadn't yeah. asked the question before. So. Nope. Okay. I you know it's good to know what what is required, and it's they usually last. Um, if I remember correctly, it's five years that you have to get it. Um, three to five years yeah. is the certification it's time frame. Is it five? Yeah, every five years. Yeah, because yeah, I know five. I have mine through 2023, um, even though, you know, it's been a little while since I've needed to have one. I, you know, I still have that um, license. But um, those are things that are state requirements. So you can definitely yeah. refer to the state manuals because they would have to, if say, for example, that Maine's Lobster place comes back from Connecticut, they have to go by Mass Law, even though they're licensed there because they're serving food in Massachusetts. Yeah, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Maybe Meredith has a regulation. Yeah, Meredith's <laughs> regulations are always very precise. From Northampton. Okay. But the problem is, it's not, it's not Jennifer who's reliable and you know wants to do a good job. It's the marginal ones that you worry right. about. So Flipping we through. have some method to track it. Yeah. And we I have actually, to have we Jennifer's have idea about seasonal, I think it's great. Yeah, no. ABCC allows towns to have seasonal liquor license permits for various things. Yep. So it's not that much different, particularly if you put something in place where they um, 
there's a, a method they can get in touch with us very quickly. Mm -hmm. So maybe there's a way to do that. It's okay. just we talked to some other towns. Maybe we can find something yeah, else. Let's, let's take a look and see what yeah. well, Northampton is probably pretty stringent. I've got somebody on that right now. Yeah. So we can take a look at their regs. Yeah, and then it's always very because strict. you know it, it is kind of the wave of the future of food trucks. Oh no, I agree. And, I agree. You know, want to be and quite frankly, you know, once that area is paved by Cumberland Farms, I'd love to see a couple of food trucks parked there. They can't get in the way of the dragon. No. I I I am Small not food against trucks. food trucks. <laughs> it's just that it was very eye opening. I, and and I, I understand that you, you just want to make sure that yeah, they're safe. Yeah, don't want anybody to get sick. Yeah. That's yeah. why we've we've kept a very reasonable fee of 25 bucks, and we do an inspection on every single application to make sure that the person yeah. is legit. Mm -hmm. And I'm just afraid it's the marginal ones that will say, "Oh, I have an annual permit. I didn't know I was supposed to yeah. pull, you know, an everyday permit. You know, every time I'm here, permit or." Even the, the seasonal law. Right. Well, part I, of the problem is like, evidently the fur cop issues an annual permit. Yes, they issue, of, well, I don't know. And that was I part of know. the problem with. And they don't do inspections. So, yeah. I, I mean, not, I mean, they do inspections, but it's random and it's not every time. And I, 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 I feel it's important to do one every single time. Yeah. I just don't want to give that up. Our, I, I know our restaurants, you can eat in Deerfield and not get sick. So, but. And I want to be able to say the same thing about food trucks. Yeah. Well, that's why I think maybe we, we do some investigation. And it was eye-opening eye to me, the problematic, the problems, you know, over the years yeah. that I've saw in food trucks yep. versus restaurants. Mm -hmm. That's all. We can put grades on them like they do in New York City. Well, you know, <laughs> part of the software thing is you maybe we should make it public. And if 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 um you fail your um food inspection it be you know we have it on the on the website mm -hmm. which some i mean a lot of towns do so, so. Well, I, I think, mean we try not to be yeah. anti business but if we're going to do food trucks maybe we'll put food trucks up there and then people will know which food trucks not yeah. to go to yep so, but you know, I mean, that would help us too. Let's, maybe let's see if we can track down some of the neighboring regulations of people that we know okay. really control things well. See what their regulations look like. Then maybe uh, working with the health department here, we can come up with some type of regulation that will be conducive to the town of Deerfield uh, and conducive to bringing well-respected, healthy, good food, yeah, good food trucks. Find a good happy medium so we yeah. can you know meet that expectation of folks yeah but do it in a manner that's safe because i totally agree with you carolyn yeah. it shouldn't be unsafe yeah. no. i mean i would just yeah. feel terrible if something happened to somebody. okay um so back to the prompt for that conversation which was approval of the health agent job description so Trevor just wrote something down. He wanted periodic presentations to Board of Health on recent activity. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you a question. Yep. Is that an essential fun function, or is that something that's assignable? Oh, so, essential, uh, so an essential function are the key things that you expect an employee to do. Uh, you can assign it. I don't care where, don't, it, where it goes, well, but, but I the thing want is, them to be... I, I want it to be somewhere in the job description that they tell us, they come and sit before the board and tell us what they've been doing. I think it's important. Well, okay, but I need you to understand that in the grand scheme of job descriptions, you don't write everything down. I know you don't write everything down. And That's an important item, I think. That's my case. Here's, my case. But here's the thing. If you do that for one job description, you need to be equitable with every other job description, which well, means it needs to come before I, I everybody. Yes, it does. There, there was a time yes. that we we, we required all department heads yes. to attend the select board meetings yes. at periodic times. I remember time. those times. You want to put them and, all there, but I, I, I. But you see, that's the thing. I want you to understand that if you create an inequitable situation, it could come back and haunt us. Yeah, yeah but it's it not inequitable. It's not inequitable. From our board of health agents.
it, well, it, how come you're not asking for presentations from everyone else? We do. Because Kevin comes before us all the time. Mm, right? You're who asking else me. doesn't? No, we don't ask for everybody to present. So I want to be clear that if I'm going to put it in here, I want to see it in every but job Casey, description because there's hey, an expectation. Casey, that's not what true is, because we're the Board of Health. What Trevor is asking for is what Alex is putting together now for us and will be, and will be presenting to us because he had already asked me what I want to see in it. And so I know it's starting to come forward. And as the Board of Health, we need to we oversee that. That is totally different than Barbara's department, Kevin's department, even the police department. We do not see oversee day-to-day -day organization, uh, oversee day-to-day -day stuff. But in, in the Board of Health, that we do. I, I oversee that department and know what they're doing all the time. There's no reason that David and Trevor shouldn't be in the loop. And having a written report documents what is being done, like when inspections are being done, um, what housing complaints are being handled. That is normal business. Well, some of that stuff is confidential. Keep that in mind. That's fine. I'm not asking for like exactly who they've talked to, and I just would but like. But all that some stuff is public record, Casey. If you yeah, have a housing complaint, that is public some, record. Some things are confidential. Every. Yeah, some things are confidential. For we cannot tell you who's sick. You belong to the inspection thing. Their agents come before their board and tell them what they've been working on, and I think it's important that we also have our agents. Where does come that happen? Us. At the Board of Health meeting. Really? Yeah. Because the, the Board of Health... They go to every Board of Health meeting. So just the Board of Health does? Yeah. Because their inspections department never set foot in Asheville. Well, Not that's once. what they do. So understand that... I'm just telling you... You want a correlation. I just want it to be equitable for everybody. That's this it. This is our Board of Health agent, and I believe that they should come and report to the Board of Health what they've been doing. And I think that's completely clear and not overstretched. I, I absolutely agree. It's not setting an expectation that shouldn't be followed or everybody well, I don't else. I agree with you. Follow. I just don't know that that's an essential function. It is for me. It is my essential function as a Board of Health that I want to have an interaction with my health agent to tell me what he's been doing periodically throughout the year or she's been doing. That is not far stretched by any means. It's not. I don't, I don't, am I out to lunch here? I think this is completely. I, I know as chair of board of health, I know what food inspections are done, where, what housing complaints are handled. I know who is sick and with tuberculosis, all that kind of stuff. Yes, we I don't cannot need to know say, all that. no, that's not true, Trevor. You need to know this stuff. We do Why not seem to say before. Why is it coming up just in a job because description? Because you're doing a job description. description. About a new I employee. realize that, but if that was an expectation that everybody had, why wasn't this implemented before I opened the can of worms with a job description? Because you expect me to. It do hasn't that. been happening, and I wish it would. And okay, I, so I've we need to say something to about that. Well, here I am saying it. So we're saying it. I just put it in there. Perfect. But that expectation then needs to carry forward in a routine manner, like Kevin and I do it, reporting back to you guys as the That's select board, saying. because the select board has the same type of authority as the Board of Health. I don't think the select board needs to No, the to select board doesn't everyone. micromanage. We're not, Casey, we the as the select thinking. board, we have certain statutory responsibilities to the town. But the Board of Health absolutely has regulatory powers and responsibilities. We are responsible. So Trevor is absolutely correct that we need to know. I know this as Chair of Board of Health because I interact with the health department on a regular basis, daily if mostly, but some, at least a couple times a week. So I know what's being done. Al, I, and I told Alex just last week that it would be lovely to have a written statement of all the health, you know, restaurant inspections, all the housing complaints, the stuff that he's doing right now. And he is putting it together to do a little monthly report to us from now on. So do you want to see him here? Do you want to see it? Anything. Some sort of periodic reporting to the Monthly health. review well, of, well, we don't need to get into those, but that's my question. It doesn't matter. We're seeing it now from the building department. Every month right. we get an email, hey, we've done so many permits. And we used to do, and we used to get it, it stopped, 
and now we get it again. So I think it's important to just have some sort of interaction yeah. and update. Like I don't, I don't disagree doing. with that. I don't think it's the individual has to be here, happened. but we have to have a report filed of what's happening. Okay, functionally, that's a different... Right. So understand, there's intersect between multiple people yeah. for activity. Yeah. And so that periodic reporting, I don't disagree with it, but how that happens has to be, it isn't just one person that's submitting information, so it, it has to be worked out in a process because it did used to happen. We used to send out a list. Mm -hmm. I remember doing it myself. Of no, we used the to number get it. of reports, or, you know, the number of permits we did in a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. Casey, we I used, used to draft do it. it. We used to do it. So yeah, all that we're doing course. is reinstituting it. So all I'm saying is that's not that's not necessary. That's something that should be an expectation. And, and wherever, actually, is wherever it is put, I don't care. It doesn't have to be essential, but somewhere in here, the person who's applying should know that every so often they should come before the board or send us a report. I'm not a stickler for I you Trevor, need to be in front of me. I just but I just want to, you know, Trevor, know like what's I going think we on. should have so. a monthly report. And that's what I asked Alex to start doing. Yeah. Even bi monthly is fine. I the uh, for me. I don't well it's also may I say something if if there's something that's going before the select board board of health that is pertaining because when I spoke to Alex today telling him about the body arts going before the public hearing, he asked me you know, Jen, do you want me to go before the board this evening? And I said, well, you know, you're, you're off and, you know, I don't. I told, I told I, him no, because we already voted. Right. And he I said, already, I told him he yeah, would talk to I you. I told him no. Okay. So, I mean, I think that I think just like with anything else, just like the building commissioner, if there's a project that's going before and you want comment, they come before the board and, and say, you know, what's happening, but, um, and Alex seemed to have been willing to, to do that this evening if you, you know, wanted that. So we want him to come, we want him to come back. I mean, I don't think oh. we can do it tomorrow, but. You know, no. the way I look at it is that, you know, I would love to see a written report come to, actually to the town administrator and be incorporated into our agenda once a month. So produced as part of the mail or produced as part of the, yeah. A summary of the monthly activity. Yeah. So, so we in know. the first or second week of September, we would get a summary of August activities. And I was actually going to talk to John about that, getting activity of the police department monthly. He definitely does that yearly. Remember, he comes in for it. Yeah, yeah. But that, like, yeah, you know, nice. something so that, you know, as a board, we're more in tune with what's really happening in this sleepy little town. The problem not is we're sleepy. not sleepy. Yeah, well. <laughs> we both agree it's not sleepy. Yeah, and... <laughs> A number of people are lulled into that thought, but you know. Um, it's sleepy because we have really good department heads that yes. try to keep all the problems at a minimum. Yeah. And you know, here again, I'm a firm believer that you know, the reports are funneled to our town administrator, and then they're put into a packet at one of our select board meetings that we can review them and see what the activities are. Well, I just feel like so much yep. happens yeah. that I try to pass on things that are mm. of importance. Or problematic. Well, if you know, but, if if there's, but honestly, all of a sudden we have a COVID outfit outbreak of 25 people. I expect to hear about it at our next meeting, and not waiting for the next month's report. No, I actually would like, call call you. Yeah, I, I mean, know, I know. know. I'm just stating a, a fact. You know, but, um, you know, if there was, you know, uh, smallpox or something else like that that hit the town. We'd well, want to, we want to know about it because there's a possibility because of the number of well, people Well, we have tuberculosis time. cases or whatever. Yeah, I, TB. All no, those just, things are yeah. passed on. But I yeah. I just... I know, but I'm I... Just, I miss things sometimes because, you know, we get distracted. So I thought a monthly report, and Alex has no problem putting that together. No. And we used to get a monthly report years ago, mm -hmm. as Casey said. Mm -hmm. yep, and we... 
off and on through the building and commissioner we had one and now we're starting up again and we've had one for a few months we we need to do that i i, I feel like I always like to know what was the monthly for the building inspector because that or kind of gives us an, an idea of free cash um, because we get, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the bigger permit. Per yeah, permit. The permit. We don't, we, we have a very conservative figure for permits. So our free cash is pretty much, yep. you know, dependent on our permit. And, and that's no different than the health department, how much money is being gener generated in the health department. We budget and we front the money as a town, and then it sort of pays for itself. But you you have to keep an eye on the permits to know if it's paying for itself. Paying for the time that right. it takes to actually execute. Right, and work. that's how come I say we, by the time you take processing and do the inspection with staff and, and all that kind of stuff, we actually do lose money on the food trucks. But I feel that at the same time, public safety is really important and it's worth it. So, you know, if we can come up with some other fee structure or some kind of other thing, that's And fine. that may be something that we address. We address a change in this. It's been a long time since we changed this. Yes. Fundamentally. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yes. maybe we need to address repeated um, inspections and stuff. Yep. Overall, I, I yep. don't know. Okay. Those are some of the things that I think Dick could, could yep. work with Great. us yep. about. So... so with the addition in the essential functions of periodic reporting, periodic and regular reporting to the Board of Health, and then all of the job descriptions have some language to this effect, performs a variety of related duties as required and assigned. Mm -hmm. I, I just would so, like you to run this by Dick again, totally, though. I mean, when's the last time you looked at this? You looked at it. I made him look at it last week. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. I think we're good. Yeah. Oh, then that's I did fine. make him look at it twice. Mm -hmm. All right. I wasn't sure he looked at it the first time. Yep. All right. He ran away this week, so I couldn't turn around and say, hey. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it looks like it's a good updated one. Well, it does have the new format. It's a little bit easier looks to good. read. In, yeah. some, in some cases, you see a difference. Like, you'll see an additional um, element in this case, confidentiality. The health mm -hmm. agent does see a number of confidential sure. reports. Yep. So that's why I say, you know, whoever's, however things are getting reported, it, I used to do it and just mention so certain personnel issues have come up and that's it, it's a sentence. Um, for, for this perspective, you know, it's certain, I don't know, Lisa calls it something when she, Lisa White calls it something when she indicates there's been a there's been a problem like TV or whatever, mm -hmm. or Dick does. They okay, we received a case. Yep. We're following up. Yep. That's all you say. That's all you, that's all because, that's all you say. Right. You know. So um, whatever. And Alex, no. you know, yeah. Dick and Alex know that. But that's what I would just say is you know something that is diplomatic and doesn't that gives the, the idea of what's happening and, and the basic data. So other than that, um, I think it covers most of what we need. And and so one question personnel board had, with, had for me is, can we go back and change these? I said, yeah, you can. Um, I prefer not to do it in the middle of a vacancy <laughs> because you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. You should have a voted job description for a vacancy, but yeah, if there's something that comes up that everybody needs to answer to or... Well, a lot of these positions, because of state requirements or whatever, they do evolve. And so, that's one of the things that yeah. Jennifer Remillard had, or Jennifer, not Ren, sorry, Jennifer, Jennifer Reynolds, we have two R's now, so I have to parse in my brain. Um, that's one of the things that Jennifer Reynolds had checked into and then when I saw Alex I asked him the same question and so the registered sanitarian it's something the state's encouraging we wouldn't necessarily have to have it in there but it's not a bad idea um, so within the next five years that's going to be a requirement so what we said and I worked it I worked the language through with the personnel board is what we said was registered sanitarian certification desirable mm -hmm. it's not a requirement so and they seemed okay with that. Anybody that 
is a good health agent will be able to get the sanitary mm, yes, license. Yeah, I think so. Anybody that's gone through all those classes, it's, is well, it's, it's it's your um, soil health evaluator, but it's also multiple like food, you know, safe serve food certificate. Right. And, I mean, it's just a bunch of different certificates that you have to get. There's a paragraph. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> that are bigger than these pairs. And then you have to document educational things, and, and you have to send it in, and then the state registers you, like a, a registered engineer. Yeah. You have to prove all the stuff that you've taken. And then, you know, there's also the CEUs. And then I was just going to say, then you have continuing ed requirements. Um, you know, every time you go to a seminar, you get credits. Um, the trick is keeping track of the credits. Yeah. All right, so I mean, that's why are you guys okay with careful. this one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Good. All right. We don't require them to go overseas. I just fixed it. <laughs> I was smart enough to send it to myself so I could fix it. <laughs> and I put this. <laughs> Great. So I fixed it. Okay. But maybe you should read it to see if I missed any more. No, no, I'll go through it. Very good. Very good. <laughs> so, okay. I'm just looking at the covert map. From for a cog. My gosh. A lot of culverts. There's a lot of culverts. A lot of culverts. Yep. So that's really that's all we might have, though. David. Has uh, legal reviewed this? Yes, the red line that you see in the tail end of that contract, yes. The Fuss and O'Neill? The Fuss and O'Neill. So this walked into my office about in the middle of a conversation with someone else. <laughs> um, it's an item and anticipated, and because of the time frame it walked in, I wasn't able to update the online um, posting. So it is an item unanticipated. I generally try to add those to the online posting as soon as I know. Yeah, I mean, I think this is the contract. It's thirty-one thousand six hundred. Budgeted, right? It's yeah. We've got this. Um, it's for the monitoring, well monitoring Monitor. from the uh, yeah. transfer station or landfill. I make a motion that we authorize the chair to um, sign the contract. Ooh. I'll second the motion. Okay. Did you say you second it? I do. Yep. He's just checking that we um, uh, up. voted I'm enough to how much money. We budgeted for that. Uh, there's section. It seems like we did, Trevor. That yeah. seems like a reasonable. Uh, Less than we used to pay, we used to pay. Yeah, up. right. We had budgeted sixty at one point. Yeah, we were up to sixty thousand dollars. So this thirty-one six hundred is pretty is pretty much within our budget. I'm pretty sure. He's looking. It's landfill monitoring. Right? Yeah, David. Yep. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's in there. I know it's in there. I just don't remember the number. It's under the transfer go. station? Yeah. Yep. That's payroll. It's under transfer station? Yes. Oh. It's a transfer station. It's a transfer station. Yeah, it's yeah. because a capped tra a landfill? Yep. Yeah. It will say well monitoring. Yeah, it should say well monitoring. It's its own. Oh, there it is. It's its own thing. Yeah, we, we budgeted 40. Okay. So we're good there. So, any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Hi, Carolyn Neff. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfman. Um, is there, did you see, can you, what was the year before? Well, we, oh, how much? Uh, was we the, budgeted 40. Yeah, we had um, budgeted 70 at one point because they, we. Uh, well, it, yes, that's why we switched engineers. Yeah. Um, so we, it was 32,000 last year is what we expended. It was 61,000 in 19, 59 in 18, 45 in 17, 44 in 16. Okay, so, so 30 is going down. Yeah. Yeah, so 31,600 is is more than, I mean, what, that's what 31,600. Yeah, so it's less than last year. By so we did, yep. they did an yeah. estimate. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's good. No, that's fine. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure. I, I couldn't remember. I know we had done so much more before. We did. I remember we had to. Yeah, yeah but these guys have been really been pared good. down substantially from what I remember. Yeah. Uh, that was yeah. an $80,000 contract at one point. Yeah. 
It was. It was well, that's when we were having the issues with yep. the cells, So. Yeah. Oh, well, yes. And to be fair, that was additional monitoring that was done. Yeah. So. Right. It, it was outside like it the regular contract. So, the yeah. numbers that you read were the regular contract numbers. Oh, okay. Not, Not when we had other. that when we had that issue. That was separate yeah. um, additional yeah. services. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. It, it so totally it was it was I, I think it was we seventy paying, or eighty. Yeah, we were paying for the water at the Melnick Farm and everything. And oh yeah, that was. Um, any public comment? Nope. Nope. Okay. What is nope. the word to say? I just wanted to say I thought you did a great job on handling all of the job description pieces. I know that that's complicated, um, and I look forward There's to more. That was like, <laughs> what'd you say? Want to help? There's more. You want to help? <laughs> you know, if you go online and Google and look up what job descriptions are in various communities, you can cut and paste from a lot of different places so you don't have to recreate the wheel. Yeah, we did we did we some do. of that. No. no, it's just a little nuances that I don't always uh, anticipate. Okay. Yep. Okay. Hearing no public discussion. I hear a motion to motion adjourn. To adjourn. Motion to, uh, oh, second. I was going to say. Oh, all those in favor? Um, hi, Carolyn. Hi, Trevor McKinney. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Hey, thank Have you a good all. evening. Thanks thank you. Thanks, Jeff.